Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hi, hi, hi. How's it going? Oh, that was bright. That is bright. Happy Saturday. Happy October. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Because I didn't check my microphone. I'm running a little behind. Sorry. Uh, why do I keep... Oh, yeah, this is what I wanted. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I know I keep saying I'm going to do the Charlie Kaftan, but I don't feel like anyone's like that interested in that. And someone actually did say um, they wanted to see the Ash jeans, and I would love to get this pair of Ash jeans out of my bin. So let's let's do it. Um, I feel like my camera is like showing way too much of me. <laughs> I, I don't like that. That's a little better. I don't know. I'm a little uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, you guys like, I wore the dress today. Yeah, you wanna see? Wait a minute, let me set all this stuff down here. I'm going through my bin. Yeah. I don't know, can you see? I don't know. I, I love this dress, it's really comfortable. I even got my clogs on. Oh, wrong leg. <laughs> anyway. Um, how are you all? I'm, I'm just really not liking this angle. <laughs> Feeling a little self-conscious right now. All right, let me say hi to you all. If you're here for the Ash Jeans, because you weren't here for this live stream, just fast forward till I start sewing. I don't want to hear it in the comments that I talk too much, okay? <laughs> hi, Delwyn. You've been here for a bit, you got here early. Hi, Aisha, hey, Margaret, hey, Michelle. Hey, Amy. Eliza, hi. <clears throat> hi, Terry. <laughs> yeah, me too, Amy. I know. I, I'm, yeah. I was really excited to sew the bags because I feel like that's like easy sewing. But I have to say, I'm not actually enjoying it that much. And I know that it sounds like it's a drag, but to me, actually, that's a relief. I'm really glad I'm not enjoying sewing the bags. So. Yeah, I think it was you, Aisha, that said you had some cut out. Um, yeah, it's pretty hot here. It's going to be pretty hot here. Plus, I'm always a little warm when I stream. So, hey, Malin. 
<laughs> oh boy. I got a, um, a copyright claim from the Ask a Zoe Question show last night because I was playing that music and YouTube's like, you don't have to do anything. You don't have a strike against your account, but someone's claiming any monetary gains from your video. And so I was, and uh, that's cool because I, I, I don't have that video monetized anyway, so. Exactly, Amy. There's regrets, but, but not of that aspect. I won't go into it. If you want to talk about it sometime, I would love to talk about it with someone. I've never gotten to talk about it with anybody. Hey, Libby. Hey, Michelle. I know. I've had them cut out for like a year. Um, cause I was going to do, I did it, I was recorded a how to video last year. So I feel like the reason I'm doing this too, is that I think I sewed the Ash jeans either a year ago or two years ago. And there was a glitch, a temporary glitch in my streaming software where when you would say end stream, it wouldn't end the stream. And the, the second time I caught it, but the first time I didn't catch it, and it was after I had sewn part one of the Ash with an H jeans. And um, that video, that stream lasted for 24 hours, but really it was like two and a half hours and then 22 hours of my end, my stream ending screen. Right. And so, um, and someone told me, Hey, it says you're live, but I don't see you. And I was like, my gosh, it does say I'm live. And then that's when I kind of started paying attention when I hit end stream to make sure it ended. And so, um, I feel like that really foil, like I've had a lot of people ask me, where's part one. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. I don't have part one just of the sewing. And it was, I think, really only the back, backs of the pants. All I had was when I sewed my prototype. And so last year, I cut out a pair to sew, and I recorded a how-to video, and the denim was just too dark. I just couldn't get the video to look good enough. And so then I cut out this pair, thinking it was lighter, and I never got around to sewing it. And so, um, and I honestly just was like, am I gonna struggle some more with the color? So um, this is a lighter denim and I'm gonna rectify that. <laughs> so nice, Eliza. Caption was correct time, okay, cool. Dude, did I check to see how accurate the pieces are now? No, I mean, what do you mean? Like, will they still fit? I have so many pairs of this jean and it's the same pattern and I can still wear them. So I feel good about that. Maybe the denim's a little different, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you've checked the skills session. All right, so that's another thing I want to mention. Hi, Vestigia, how's it going? Um, that's the other thing I want to mention is uh, I think a lot of people know that the fly, the type of fly you sew on the Ash jeans is not my favorite, personally. I, I like the sewing method, it's fine, uh, but I don't like the end result because what can happen is, especially on stretch denim, your fly, when you're wearing them, will make the zipper exposed a little bit. It'll peek through the, the front, center front. And so recently I did a skill building session that was a September skill building session all about pants closures. And I really dive, dove into what's the difference between the way you sew the ash jeans and um, other zipper fly methods. And the one I like is when the zipper fly facing is built onto the jeans so that, well, this is the back right here. So we'll put this aside. But the front, it'll have the little fly facing, this guy right here, it'll be built on. So when you cut out your jeans, it looks like that, right? So this is the style I like. Oh no, they look pretty good, actually. A little thready. <laughs> so um, I like this way because the zipper gets tucked in really deep behind the fly. So that's why I like doing it. Um, and if you are sewing jeans, what I recommend is, yeah, putting your fly, well, you can, you can get my pants closures skill building session. I'll tell you exactly all the things you need to do and how to sew it. <laughs> so anyway, I've gotten lots of messages since, especially since my Let's Be Honest pattern review about the Ash jeans about this and saying, are you ever going to show a way to fix that 
I haven't done a video on that. Um, however, the pants closures skill building session covers what I would do, and that is I would put the fly facing built onto the pant and I would sew it in that way, which is very, very similar to, um, it's identical to the way uh, you do it on the Ames jeans and the Ginger jeans and another pair of jeans I can't think of. Um, so if you have either of those two patterns, that's what I would do. I would just, I would just trace that. Hey, Shim. So anyway, but I am going to give you tips on how to get the best, the best uh, outcome to prevent as much of the zipper showing. So, all right. So I'm just going over all my pieces here. So you get a weird pocket. Yeah, because you sew the center front seam at the end. It's so weird. Um, I just haven't had the time, Michelle, but one's coming very soon and I'm very nervous about it and I'm very much regretting that I'm doing it. So there you go. Sick still. Oh, you're quarantining from them. Quarantining. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be um, jeans today. Yeah, hiding your sewing room. Hey Terry, how are you? How are you? Oh, how are the sickies? Sick. Oh, I thought when I asked you, how are you doing? I thought you said I'm sick. <laughs> um, all right. So let me, I'm just getting my pieces together because I kind of, my bin was kind of all out of whack here. I, I'm realizing now why I couldn't find these because they've been sitting in this bin. It's another reason I really hate it when I have something in a bin because then, um, I, I don't know what's missing, you know? All right, so I'm going to, I'm just putting all my pieces the way I like to sew them. This is another tip I have for, for me because I have a gushy belly, right? This is the pocket facing, right? So this is the piece that goes right here on the pocket. For me, I feel like the, um, especially with stretched denim, this will wrinkle on me like this when I'm wearing it. And what I have come to do is interface it. Look at this, this SF 101 is perfect. Old stuff, old school. I hope it's perfect. Wait, well, it looks okay to me. All right, so we're gonna set this aside. I always sew the backs first. Here's the waistband. I don't think I need, I just threw a pocket in here. It doesn't even match the denim. <laughs> Uh, this is probably a coin pocket. Nope, not doing that. Maybe I'll do the zipper carriers, zipper carriers, belt carrier, belt loops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, nice, Terry. Yeah, I like that one. I, I like that one. I have to say that I need to force myself to start using that one more. I mean, obviously I love the Fairfield and I've used the F Fairfield a lot, but um, yeah, my pocket fabric. Um, but you know what? I make a mistake every time I do the Fairfield because of the way it's printed and the way the seam allowances have their own legend so I can keep track. And um, why not just do the Jensen? It fits my husband great and it's less fussy. I feel like I've been such a champion for the Fairfield, but in a way it's a little bit, you know, wish they'd fix those two things, you know? They're, they're not necessarily wrong. They're just like make it harder to sew. So, <coughs> oh, sorry. I started to choke on spit. <laughs> mm mm. Oh, there are more things in heaven and earth than spoon flower shem. <laughs> no, this is a, uh, gosh, I know all about this fabric because this was one of the fabrics Minerva gave me for free. And I backed a whole quilt with it. And this is my second pair of Ash jeans using um, this as pocket fabric. Cause isn't it cute? It's so cute. The colors in person too are just, it's just like a muted rainbow and I really like it. Yeah, very cute. 
Uh, I only have one pocket stitched though, so what do you guys think? Do you have the Jensen, Elena? If you have the Fairfield, it, the Fairfield's great, obviously. It is, I know, Shem, exactly. Oh, there's a lot of spoon flower designers that end up becoming fabric designers and vice versa. I mean, look at Sarah Watts. She's a very, very accomplished fabric designer, and now she's selling her stuff on a spoon flower. <clears throat> um, I need another pocket design. So this, this, um, you guys, this, this thread right here, what do you guys know about this? What does this say? This is, oh, it's 100% polyester. Interesting. This is the Mara 30. So I can tell I stitched this pocket with this. So I'm gonna stitch this other pocket with it, but I'm gonna switch to something else for the rest of the stitching. Because my machine likes it better. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not Michelle because that's when I have a pocket stay. So when I have a um, pocket stay that goes all the way to the center front, I, you're right, I always make that mistake. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, that sounds like so bittersweet. You're cutting into your first liberty, but you're sick. <laughs> So the, I think the drawback to the Jensen, Elena, is the sizing. Hi, Kara. Yes, hi. I saw that. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to the stream. Everyone here is really awesome. Except for Terry. Got to watch out for her. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm using, Elena, the top stitch thread. So what I guess what I wanted to find, uh, uh, or I want to finish that thought because I feel like on something I made recently, I'm noticing that my top stitching on the jeans is discolored from the jeans. Oh yeah, Shem, I, I announced my membership. It, are you on a desktop or a, a mobile device? Because I literally don't know. <laughs> uh, it's next to the subscribe button. So yeah, so I have my own emotes now. Woo, woo. They also only work in my channel. Which is kind of a bummer. Hi, Karen. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. It goes up to 4X. Okay. Thanks, Terry. <clears throat> Use the Mara 70. It's lighter than the 30, but bolder than the 100. Yeah, exactly. You're, okay, yeah, so Shem, it's next to the subscribe button. It says join, as if you're joining the live stream. It's so confusing. Yeah. You, you have to, yeah, it's somewhere else, Elena. I think Michelle's the expert here. <laughs> She's been walking people through it. Hi, Nicole. What, how, a, what, what? <laughs> Nicole's keyboard it has foiled her. <laughs> I have had the weirdest comments on some of my YouTube videos lately. So I even texted, I took a screenshot of one of them to someone. And so sometimes I get these weird messages in my YouTube that look like quotes. Welcome, Shem. Woo. <laughs> it's the money sign. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I think if you're already a member, we can't see it. That's why I couldn't see that. Got it. Yeah. See, Shim, you're gonna love seeing saying the so like the um, pug is the tangent. Like when I'm on a tangent, that's just for you. You always like pointing out when I go off and get distracted. Thanks, Michelle. You're on the YouTube app and you see join next to subscribe. Oh, okay. <clears throat> How about a mouse for, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, 
Yeah, so let me get, I have this little piece of paper I was gonna draw on. I'm gonna use Libby's tip. I have a scrap of it right here. Okay. You did like hours? You spent hours? <laughs> Yeah, so the uh, the heart, the what it I mean, it's means just love, like or good or something. What else could watermelon mean, Shim? But everything good and right in the world, which isn't a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, desktop is it's just easier, right? Yeah. So, um, what are they? So the this one is you know like if I use my seam ripper. Because here's the backstory, here's the inside joke of why it's a drink, is that a long time ago, I think Nancy said, oh, Carol, thanks, Kara, thanks. Is it Kira or Kara? Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, so the whole backstory with the rip emoji is that Nancy, one of my longest subscribers, said, we should make this a drinking game every time she uses her seam ripper. And um, that's how that started. So yeah, exactly. And I don't know why, but my commands aren't working right now, Michelle. Let's see if it works. It takes forever. But yeah, so exclamation point drink every time I use my seam ripper. And so I just thought I'd make that an emoji in honor of Nello Nancy. Kira, thank you. Kira, Kira. Okay, key as in turning a key. So I have, I wrote down the others you guys talked about. Wait, they're not here. They're on my other thing. Um, and I'm going to work on those this weekend. So I'm going to do experiment and like two other. Oh, the fa sewing fairy because we believe in the sewing fairy around here. She's ruthless, man. Where's my little scissors? Here we go. Here we go. All right. A mouse. Oh, God. I mean, is he chasing the mouse or is he, did he miss the mouse and the mouse is going that way? Maybe the mouse is chasing him. Like Kira Knightley. <laughs> That's okay, Amy. I still love seeing it. <laughs> He's like looking at a bee. And so the inside joke on that one was, do y'all remember when he got stung by a bee and my husband and daughter were in the chat saying, they were like calling me and texting me and calling me and texting me. And I was like, what is happening? And so we all had to like look, stop the stream and just look at what's going on. Yeah, you can, Shem. I know. That is kind of nice, isn't it? I just saw this streamer the other day play a clip of when he discovered that. And, and he had been streaming for like seven years and never knew he could do that. It was the hit, like when he saw that was really funny. Chasing a, chasing a bee. Cause he got stung by a bee. A ball of yarn. Oh, a ball of yarn. I missed that, Elena. A How would I stitch that though? Like, right? Something like, well, I guess that's a, I mean, honestly, if the ball of yarn was this big, he should be running away from it. <laughs> hmm. Witch of the Amazon. <clears throat> oh, a chasing a butterfly. I thought you meant the pug was. Oh, that's a real thing. <laughs> Continuous line thing, yeah. Which I could do, but I feel like the yarn would be thicker. Butterfly, I don't wanna stitch a butterfly. I like the mouse. The mouse sounds kinda of easy. That's, I feel like I just doomed myself. That's a hedgehog. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna take forever. 
Okay, he's shaping up to look more like a mouse. Something like that. Oh, you can't even see. It's a gigantic mouse again. Very big mouse. Okay, so let's say we want this like right here. All right, something like that. Let's just make sure. <clears throat> I love the cat climbing up my pocket. I kind of want to do something quick. This is, man, this stuff's stretchy. Turn the mouse around so they're facing off. All right, I kind of like that. All right, let's, let's try that. That's a gigantic mouse. <laughs> Hi Alex, how's it going? Hey Christina. I thought about a cat tree, but I thought that might look kind of weird on my butt. A spool thread, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> the, the skull's kind of distracting, isn't it? I mean, what do we think of that? Doesn't this pocket look smaller? It's not. But it is asymmetrical. Like this, Eliza. It's a huge mouse. <laughs> I could do like, um, you know, I just finished the game Stray. I can make it a Zerk. <laughs> what if we made it a, like a few mice? Like, like three little mice chasing him. Let's continue, continue the line. Just make a squiggle so it looks like a polar ball of yarn. <laughs> Hi, Adina. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kira, quilting and bag making world. Nice. Mouse army. Maybe put them a little closer together, right? All right, so what if we do... Oh, you guys. I feel like I do not know what a mouse looks like right now. Is that clear or what? <laughs> hey, Aloy. Aloy. <laughs> I said Aloy for the game. A computer mouse. <laughs> I mean, they used to have a tail, didn't they? How are we feeling about this? And are we thinking, this looks like a lot of work to stitch? Nah. Nothing like the quail. I'm trying to make sure it looks, I'm looking at the screen because sometimes it gives me a better perspective, you know? Um, I want a straight line. All 
Are we down for this? Let's try it. Oh, I never make this stuff precious. You guys know me. I just go for it. It's just a jeans pocket. You just can't spend your life, you know, <clears throat> thinking about it too much. I, I just want the line to be straight across though. So that's the one thing I want. So where's my, uh, my soapstone? Right here, do this and we'll do this. All right, and then now we have this. We have some tape. So the cat is going for the mice. I like the mice chasing the cat. <laughs> I kind of like the mice chasing the cat. Hey, Nancy. Wow, you guys have really strong opinions about whether the cat should be chasing the mice or not. This is like the whole, you know, should pineapple be on pizza thing. It's the sewing version. An underdog story. I don't know. The cat is looking like the underdog in this situation. Things have gone horribly wrong if you're in this situation. Okay, well, <clears throat> the big mouth doesn't hurt. Um, okay, well, we can stitch this either way because it can go like this or like this, except I think the pockets are supposed to go on the pants. I feel like this is asymmetrical, you know? All right, so let's uh, stitch across the whole. All right. That didn't work. Oh, it's stuck on the thing over here. This was stuck around the base of my, um, my thread holder. Don't tell Noodle. <clears throat> no this is literally Noodle right now. He has, he, he's like still learning like what to chase and what not to chase. And he gets himself into a pickle pretty often. Hi Fiona, how's it going? <laughs> he needs on one pocket pineapple on the other. I don't mind pineapple on pizza at all. I'm actually not a huge pizza lover. So my idea of what I like on pizza is horrifying to everybody. Cause I don't even like red sauce. <laughs> it's Tom and Jerry all over. All right, let me, let me check my tension here though. Because. Because we got it. Ooh, that is, that is really terrible. Look at that. Ah, oh, see, this is why I don't like using this thread. I love the way it looks, but I have to really crank down my tension. Which has, you know, other repercussions. Look at that, it's still, like I'm, I'm cranking, cranking. Did you hear all those clicks? It doesn't even seem possible to be able to, look at this, it's not even, it's not even helping. Uh, I may just use the other. How much can you, can you really tighten this? That Nothing is happening right now. on the back of the cat. You can't really see. Yeah, I might do a new needle. I'm gonna also um, loosen up my tension on my, my bobbin. I just use my fingernail and turn the screw like tiny, tiny bit. I'm using, yeah, I'm using the Mara 30 which I do have a lot of trouble 
getting my machine to like, you know. Oh, where's that, where's that coin pocket that we got rid of? Here it is right here. It's a little better. Do you know how many times I've spun my tension now? Not yet. I haven't inter interfaced the cat yet. Or the cat I did, yeah, see? Yeah, it's the Mara 30. Look at this. This is the tension dial. I almost can't do any more. Like if it goes any tighter, it won't, it won't let the thread stay in the tension discs. Yeah. I love the way the Mara 30 looks on top, but it struggled with the tension. Is there a reason I interfaced? Ah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It'll, because it's a stretched denim, I feel like if I don't, it will be all wavy. On the coin pocket, this is the coin pocket. <laughs> Rest in peace, coin pocket. This is basically a tension simulator. You stick with 70. Yeah, I just can't get this. Let's put it a, uh, let's make sure we do have a new needle. I'm gonna put a 16 in. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, definitely, I, I mean, I think it's also a little bit, um, it feels nicer, you know what I mean? Go ahead and wind another bobbin. You think that's, that actually is not a bad idea. And you know what I just did? I've been doing so much tension, I just wound a whole bobbin. Okay, I'm gonna do that, Terry. Is that help, Terry, on yours? Do you feel like? I don't like coin pockets because they catch on every on my hand when I put my hand in the pocket. And and sometimes I think I'm putting my keys in my pocket and they catch in my coin pocket and then they fall on the floor. We're, we're, I'm a klutz. You need it back, Fiona? We were just talking about this the other day about like what it takes to kind of like get your sojo back because it happens. And I, I just think like don't sweat it. You know what I mean? It's okay. It, your brain is percolating. I know, 30 on top looks so good. But why does it not like us? You know? I mean, how... how? <laughs> I think I only have room for one thing at a time, you know, like as far as like sewing goes. Is this a, I need another piece of uh, fabric. I can't tell what's what anymore. All right, we're getting there. I'm sticking with that, okay. All right, we need a piece of interfacing really quick and then we'll go to the um, serger as well. I think the Trico roll is perfect for this because it's uh, wide enough. I'm gonna cut off a little piece. My table is uh, very full right now. Okay. Okay. 
or something like that. Oh, the only problem with that, Nancy, I agree with you on that. And if I were doing two, more than one layer of fabric, it would be better. <laughs> I am a klutz. Um, I did adjust my bobbin tension. Um, I, my problem with it of, of only doing it so-so is that the stitching on top will eventually come out. Like, it won't come out, but it'll get, like, loopy. Yeah, the seams don't fall apart exactly. Oh, really? That's awesome, Malin. That's awesome. I love that. I know you've been knitting a lot. All right. <laughs> Just immortalized a thread in there. A flannel sleeveless hinterland. Ooh. You're not doing that hinterland, um, like, uh, drafting thing, are you? That big class. So um, Amy uh, Manorino shared that behind the seams historical like year long thing. I got it. That was a huge splurge, but I, I'm kind of into the idea. It's something totally different. You use text 80 from Waywac. Yeah, so the other thing I really like is I got this, um, I got this whole jeans jean sewing thread package and there is one yellow in there but it's it's and it's it's not as heavy as this so okay let's do it i'm never gonna get through these jeans i was gonna do two live streams today Yeah, I think that, that class was genius, you know? Yeah, I don't think the hinterland is a particularly, like, um, fitted, you know, garment. It, it's kind of loose in the waist, so you're gonna get kind of mixed results, in, in my opinion. Not in a bad way, just, you know, it's to be aware of that. I'm just thinking. You might want to mute me for a bit while I do this. <laughs> I, my stitches are so long right now that it's really not boding well for this little mouse. Plus, I need an ear and an eyeball. So let's do this eye. I should have done that. And then I'm going to go up here and do an ear. I'm not too fond of where my, what my ear is going to look like right now. All right, so I'm, what I'm learning to, oh, I should have pulled this thread, is uh, I'm not going to tie this off right now. Oh, but I gotta sew my pocket. Shoot, I, I kinda do. So I just need to pull this to the back. I do my back stitch, I don't do back stitches on these. Where's this one right here? This is this one right here. Here's one. And then, Here's one. You could probably come back in like 20 minutes. 
and um, I'll be sewing the jeans. Maybe we can get a get some timestamps for this video. This right here is a problem, though. This right here. Here we go. I got it. I think. You. This. I need you right here. You were my starting one. I just kind of tug it, but this one's, it's right in this stitch. It got stitched. Almost. And then this one here. This one, you. Does stitching in place knot it? Um, well, I like the clean look without the back stitch. Yeah, Shim. Come on. Is it this one here? It's the tension is so tight even though it's not really. The Mara, it's really easy, it's plied, so it's really easy to just grab. Oh, come on. Which one are you? I think this one, I think Anna's right about this one. I don't think this one I can get to the, um, pull to the back, but what I can do is just, oh, thanks, Adina. I, I love red. I don't have enough red stuff. That's why I made this dress. And this is the Brussels washer linen, which is just so great because you don't really have to iron it. I mean, if you, you could. Oh, um, maybe. Yeah, potentially, Anna. Just depends. I would test it maybe. Make sure, you know. Rhinestone eyeballs. It's a rhinestone mousy. I like the idea of the of sleeveless but flannel. Hinterland, this is a knitter talking. You can tell. <laughs> because, uh, like, knitters have all these really warm sweaters, and sometimes you just get a little too warm. <laughs> okay, there's one. One down. The, the army is going to beat me. Okay, but how could I do this a little less thready? Or we're going to start at the tail this time. I'm gonna make my stitch length a little smaller. Just two legs this time. It's a back pocket. Okay, we're gonna do our nose. Nose. We're gonna do the eyeball this time. Eyeball, eyeball. We're gonna do the ear. This way, when you do it in just one continuous stitch, you won't have as many knots as I just did. Where's the bottom thread? Keep track of your under thread so you don't sew on top of it because that's really what causes the complications of what I was just doing a second ago. I'm just running along the, the um, tail now. Okay, there we go. Phew, look at that. Only two tails. Look at how much cleaner that is. Wait, all you think of watching Tammy work on this is the guy would, wasn't interesting in the dialogue or mistake. What? <laughs> oh, I know. 
Today, I have an interesting person commenting on my overall video. Remember when I drafted my husband overalls? His first comment is, please ma'am, uh, drafting of the bib um, and front, please ma'am. He's, he's commenting on the drafting video. I'm like, okay, well, this is the drafting video. Go forth and draft. <laughs> Another comment, seven minutes later. Please, ma'am, send me the drafting of the bib, please. Like, the free video wasn't enough on YouTube. <laughs> like, oh boy. I was all, no. <laughs> you gotta do the work, buddy. And guess what? It's free. I feel like I just evolved doing this. Did, did you notice that? Like my first mouse, a little rough. Second mouse, third mouse, a lot faster. <laughs> and now we're gonna get to the sewing of the jeans. Please ma'am, please ma'am. I think I've had comments from him before and he always says, please ma'am. What'd you call me? <laughs> oh man. Okay, so let's take off this paper and see our mousies come alive, right? I like to do this with my all, break the paper. And then later on, I can kind of fine tune, get the rest of the paper out of here, you know, like once the, after the stream and once the pocket's actually sewn on there. As long as I get most of it so that there's nothing, uh, I have to dig out from behind the pocket, which I don't actually. But I don't like pulling too much because the Mara, because if, see, this is actually a really good example of why you really want that tension to be pretty good because when you pull, like when I pull up on this paper, it will like loosen the stitches. I know it's polite except for um, in the way, like the fact that he just wants me to do everything for him. Could be a veteran. I don't think so. You guys can go look for yourself, see what you think. Mint the, the overall drafting video. I don't know. He just wants my pattern. I'm like, I don't have the pattern. He He's like, he could watch the drafting video. <laughs> you know? It's literally a video about drafting or buy overalls. I don't know. Go crazy. Yeah, I know, I saw that. That's really cool. But they they talked about it as if it was the stiletto. And I felt like going, no, don't get the stiletto. Thank you, Elena. I don't mind being called ma'am. But it was the context, you guys, like, he just wanted, he wanted free, he wanted me to do the work for him. And you know, I did do the work for him. <laughs> yeah, it, that is true, Anna. And I think like in this context, he might be trying to appeal to what is polite here. But, um, I don't know, the begging, and there was a ton of these, like the begging emoji, and I was just like, oh, no, I'm not gonna do it for you. No matter how many times you please me on me, I'm not doing it for you. I already did do it for you. Okay. Mice are coming alive. 
I like this little method of using the paper, but I do think like maybe I should not because this part right here is where it kind of stretches out my stitches sometimes when I use, especially when I use the Mara. And then what I do is I go back like this one right here. You see how this got a little loose right here? Like that. So then I go back here and I will go through all the stitches like this. But this one, I'm so close to the edge. Maybe I can just pull and pull. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Christina. Water soluble stuff, maybe. We just want to see the mice. Please, ma'am. We just want to see the mice. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that guy, Shim, because someone said something in the stream when I was telling you guys about that, and it didn't occur to me until they said this that maybe he didn't know he was watching a live stream. And if you, if you thought you were watching a recorded video and it was a live stream, that would be kind of weird. And, and I could see why he'd be like, why does she keep talking about this stuff? <laughs> I, I don't know though, I, I, maybe, I think a lot of people don't know about live streams, you know, so maybe they don't understand I'm talking to people in chat. I don't know. But if they're not going to watch that, because there's an intro before all my videos, you guys all have probably all have it memorized by now um, of what to do in a live stream, you know, to make it go faster. So. Can we get a please ma'am emoji? Oh my gosh. I may have to do that. Now that we have, I, like, I think we have over five subscribers, I get more emoji slots. Please, ma'am. Okay, can you kind of see it? There's still little pieces of paper here. <laughs> I want to see all of it. I get a little bit hyper-focused on this kind of thing. <laughs> Don't, don't people like, don't people who are like experts in this have like a little like, um, tool for this? Um, what's this called again? Weeding. This is called weeding, right? That's actually a really good term for it. I do feel like I'm weeding my stitching, you know, like getting rid of the weeds. Okay. Woo. Covered. Phrase of the day. So, so recorded. <laughs> now that's true. You know what, Christina, though? Like, I actually noticed the other day that there is a piece of paper like that in one of my pairs of jeans that I've worn like 50 times. <laughs> so, three blind mice. All right, so now the whole uh, pizza versus pineapple. I, I want the ch mice chasing the cat. What do you guys think? <laughs> Please, ma'am. You think making it wet would make it worse? Maybe. It might be, you know, that vellum is kind of a weird stuff, you know. I think I got most of it, though. I just don't think the Mara thread is ideal for that, you know, like for the weeding aspect because I, I'm not getting the tension right. All right. Ooh, the crows are mad out there. Can you guys hear them? You love cats, but you're all for the mice winning this one. See, look at this. Yeah, so yesterday, oh wait, a couple days ago, I was washing the dishes. And when you look out on my kitchen window, you look at, there's a little um, a little brick patio with a barbecue on it and a, a little roof over it, right? Oh no, don't tell me I can't go further. Um, and who is, and the bird feeders are all there. Who is walking 
slowly on top of the roof of the barbecue thing like this. He's stalking birds at the bird feeder and in the bush below him. Like, what's this cat going to do? Jump off the roof after a bird? He would, too. He's just such a baby, you know, that way. And he's such a tree climber. I'm just going to cinch this up a tiny bit. I can't grab it. <laughs> kind of frustrating. Why is the baseline wavy? What's the baseline? What do you mean? We need an all emoji. I know, I have it on the list. I promise. Promise. I just want to get this one straight line not wavy. Not wavy, but um, the loop out. Because it's hard to do this after the pocket is done. So then I promise I'm sewing jeans. The line of so why is it wavy? Um, I mean, it's the, the this top stitching thread does look a little wiggly. Is that what you mean? I think that it's partly the, the nature of this thread, Eliza. Maybe if I put the stitch length a little longer. Hand sewing, we don't do no stinking hand sewing around here. Just, I'm just kidding. We do a tiny, tiny bit. But to be fair, remember I needed to hand sew the bodice of this to finish off fixing the V? I didn't do that yet. <laughs> Okay, let's fix the tension now. Yeah, that, I think that's, that's true. I think Terry said that correctly. Like, because I was like yoinking on that paper, um, I think that it will, um, pull on the stitches and because my tension wasn't really that perfect, Eliza, you know, I'm going to do two strands of thread to stitch my jeans together. So I'm putting two strands. I have two cones. What'd you find, Nancy? What are you looking for? I'm sorry, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, the wave. Yeah, and you know, it's just like the na nature of that uh, thread sometimes. Okay, stop holding the thread so tight, Jeremy. Ooh, oh, I didn't. I was all excited. I thought I got both of them in through the needle at the same time. We'll see. I did not. I was liking <clears throat> one of the tips in that Love to Sew podcast was using dental flossers somehow for f threading needles. I meant to look into that or something like that. <laughs> okay. I need a new piece of fabric to test my stitching with. Um, let go of me. Is this a piece of fabric? Let's try this. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> they can stare at my butt. Actually, maybe two strands is too much. I'm actually thinking two strands is too much. This thread is thicker. Okay, I got another plan. I'm gonna use that stuff there. I'm just gonna use my jeans thread. This stuff works really good. I really 
really need a, a um, thimble. Yeah, that's true, Elena. It does. I really want to get a thimble. I need a piece of scratch fabric. Oh, oh, oh I actually have one here. Here, mine. I stocked up one day. All right. It's actually not too bad. Okay, okay. Hi Amy, how's it going? The thimble only helps the middle finger, like right here. Do they not have thimbles for both? <clears throat> you lose thimbles. Oh, it's a feather, uh, Sydney. <clears throat> this was for a fabric group that we did. So I used to have a heat transfer machine and I would design graphics that reflected the fabric print that it go, that went with. Hi Elizabeth, how's it going? Can't do it without a thimble. So what thimbles do you guys recommend? Like the, I like the idea of the leather one because it seems like it would be conforming you can wear it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? Can't you just put on like two? Or is that hard to sew with? I am definitely a uh, hand sewing noob. <laughs> like we all know, I can, I can barely see the pocket markings here. All right, so um, let's... Uh, let's... Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stitch... All right, here we're gonna start sewing the the, the pants. Mushroom buttons are in mail. Ooh. Okay, so um, I think I always start with the back of pants. Let's see, twelve ten. I'm starting the sewing of the ash jeans. All right, we got our pockets, and uh, we're gonna do the backs first. And so I always start with the backs in jeans, even though I know the instructions start with the front. And the reason I do that is because I feel like there's a lot of people that are a little bit nervous sewing jeans. And I think this is such a great low risk area to start. Um, and you can kind of get the hang of sewing with your denim, seeing how your machine reacts, uh, your top stitching, your tension, uh, whatever those kinds of parameters are. And often when I do jeans, what I do is part one is the whole back and then the part two is the front and the waistband. Um, so we're gonna do all of it today. So right now, because I'm gonna maximize my time at the serger, I'm gonna overlock the tops of my pockets, but I'm also right now, I'm gonna stitch my yokes to my back pants and, sti and then um, be able to serge that seam as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, and so make sure you don't get your yoke incorrect. Usually the deeper end of the yoke goes to the center back seam and it's really easy to, you can put it on either direction, right? And you don't want to do that. So, so I'm going to sew my seam. If you want to just overlock it, you can just overlock it, but uh, it's a kind of a big seam allowance. So I'm going to do the seam and then overlock the, the seam allowance. I'm going to trim it. Um, I don't think I'm going to do anything fancy, Shim. I'm just going to do a seam with overlock finish, something pretty accessible. <clears throat> I will explore doing a flat felled seam for the inseam, though. I think that would be nice, you know. 
nice and comfortable. All right, so now we're gonna overlock the tops of our pockets and the yoke seam here. Actually, I'm gonna flip, so this is gonna be pressed up. So I'm gonna put my serger face up on the pant side. Wait, are you stuck? You sound like you're stuck. I just threaded this and I hadn't sewn with it yet. Ooh, look at all that stuff that just came out. Does that sound like kind of terrible? <laughs> How'd it go, Adina? That's awesome. Hey, Danny, how's it going? stitching thread over here. Beautifully, you've been wearing them inside, still 100, yeah. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. All the other jeans I've been wearing, I made about five years ago, so it's time for new pants. Oh, awesome. That's great you have new pants. Love it. All right, so I'm gonna hem the top pocket. And uh, you could you can just roll hem it, or you can turn it like I'm gonna do, just once. <clears throat> How'd your landers come out, Aisha? Those are the ones from the. I should know this. I feel like I asked you a thousand times about your landers, and they're literally the ones we fit all summer, isn't it? <laughs> So can you do that with a serger? Why the overlocker? Me too, Nancy. <laughs> what do you mean, Terry? Can I do that with a serger? Why the overlocker? Uh, you have a serger? Yes, you can. I'm gonna, I uh, have the pocket facing up because I have a blue bobbin and the top stitching thread on top, so. Um, if you have two machines, you can set up with one with your top stitch thread, you know, one with your seam. You might like that better. Let's do two rows. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that what you mean, Terry? A serger and overlocker are the same thing. Um, they are they're the exact same thing. I, I, it's funny, I was just talking to someone yesterday and I was just saying you could surge it, surge it, and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and she finally was like, I don't understand what you mean by that. I realized she's used to the term overlock, so yeah. Those look pretty symmetrical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty confusing that they are re referenced. And I've actually, I looked into it once to find out like kind of why, but um, no one really knows why. And I, I think it can be a regional thing too. So like in Europe, they say um, serger, right? And we say overlock, something like that. I can't remember. Um, wait, let me understand what you asked, Sydney. Is there any downside to using the regular seam thread in the bobbin the whole time and just switching the top, top thread? Yeah, you can totally do that. Yeah, you could totally do that. I would do that if I wasn't streaming. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, Terry. No, I, yeah, I, I totally understand. It is really confusing, but serger and overlock are exactly the same thing, and and it's not even a debate. Like it, it, it actually is. So sometimes you'll hear overcast the edge. That's kind of the same thing, and that's overcasting the edge is kind of what I just did here on the pocket, where I only did the edge of the fabric and I didn't really do a seam together and trim like I did on the yoke here. So now I'm just top stitching my yoke. Apparently I've decided to do double needle top stitching. On some machines you can use a double needle. I can't on mine, I always say that's because it's an industrial and there's a very tiny little hole down there. I can't put two needles in. Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Yeah, and that's why I picked a blue bobbin because if the tension's not perfect. And right now the tension is favoring the bad side being the bobbin side. But say it was the opposite. If I had a yellow, you would see my stitches coming up, but that's why I did the blue. So it doesn't look great on the inside though. Yeah, and you can, um, yeah, you can drop the knife on your serger too. Not all sergers will let you do that. Yeah, exactly, Elena. Okay, so um, you'll notice that my seam is a little wavy. That will totally calm down later on in the wash, so don't worry about it. This is my right back. And I can see my little marks, you probably can't. <laughs> They're really faded. They've been sitting in my bin for a while now. Yeah, exactly, Nancy, that's so smart. I'm gonna make sure I can see this one right now. And I can, but barely. Right there. So now we're just gonna top stitch the back pockets on. You can do as many penny, you can um, iron under the edge. If you want, um, I'm pretty cavalier when it comes to this kind of stuff. So you do what works for you. Nothing is wrong here. Yeah, you can't use top stitching thread in the bobbin. I haven't heard of a machine that can. It's not to say that it's not possible, but not possible for any machine I've used. Use my awl, poke that raw edge under there. I really like to capture it in the stitching there so it doesn't poke out because that's my, you'll hear me say this a lot, it's my pet peeve is when the little threads poke out of your back pocket. My stitching, oh my gosh, I was being a little too cavalier there. <laughs> is the camera angle okay? Hey Raquel, how's it going? Oh, that's nice of you. It's the Upton dress. I just fixed it the other day, so, and I haven't been able to wear it, so I was like, I'm gonna wear it. Yeah, right, Libby? I know, when I used to have two machines, it was so nice. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I re really wish I could have kept my other industrial machine, and I, the only reason I didn't was because of space and dealing with another industrial machine. But, um, so my little corner is poking out, so I'm just gonna shove it down there. And then when I go across the top, what is this? Oh, it's a pencil. It would have been so nice to just leave my industrial set up for top stitching, you know? I'm get rid of these pins now. Yes, the cat is running from the mice. What do you want to make of it? It's kind of a hotly debated topic in our chat. <laughs> you know me, Raquel. I just, I'm just going for it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a little wonky. We embrace the wonk. Hi, Corey. Yeah, right? Who cares about correct? We do care about correct. 
and get rid of some of these threads here. I'm learning not to trim my top stitching threads too close because I don't know if you can see like they're, they're definitely stiffer and sometimes they'll start um, kind of undoing themselves before I get them secured. So I try not to trim them down too far. All right, again, if you, sometimes if you have enough seam allowance, you could fold this corner back like this under there. That's the top of the pocket just to secure it. And then you won't have that frayed, those, the, the egg, the, the frayed threads coming off of it, like coming out of your pocket. Are there really 70 people here today? Wow. Hello. It's because I'm sewing jeans, isn't it? It's been a while. Well, make sure you subscribe. And if you like jeans sewing, I have lots of videos about it and flies. I feel like I did my seam allowance a little bigger on this pocket. Not to mention that the mice already uh, <laughs> look a little out of proportion to like the cat. <laughs> Do it works. Do it works for you. There, you know, I, there are certain things in sewing that they work best for certain types of rules, but I don't know why so much in the sewing, especially the home sewing world, is um, never do this and always do that. It, it's there's literally n no rules. <laughs> It's tradition, it's all based on tradition. I mean, or like how it's been done. And there are lots of things like I say that, that work really, really good. And I use them, you know, but sometimes you, you just gotta do what works for you. All right, there's our spontaneous back pockets there. I like. The, the cat's kind of, well, whatever. Maybe they're, Adina. That's so what I was saying. I just finished that game Stray, and I said maybe they're Zerks. <laughs> Which probably nobody in this chat is getting the reference for. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a center back seam now. And like I said, I'm doing my seam, and then I'm overlocking. So um, if you want to do all in one, you can. But I like having the added seam here. Uh, some people will put also a, a row of stretch stitch right here to give you some added reinforcement. If this is like an area of your pants that you blow out occasionally or whoever you're making them for, that happens. All right, so we're going to go uh, overlock this. I liked Stray a lot, actually. It's really different. It's a little bit... Um, What's the word? It's a little bit melancholy. You know what I mean? It's a little bit melancholy and I don't mind that. I kind of like that. So, okay. So, um, one of my tips when you're making jeans is this is, this is how I do it. And, and there's lots of different ways to do this. I've seen it the way I do it. And I think this is one of those things like once you kind of find a method that just kind of works for you and you, rem you, you remember every time you, you, you do it, then it becomes kind of the way you do it. It doesn't mean that it's better or right or wrong or whatever. Hey, Ray, how's it going? Thank you. I love all the random numbers. <laughs> all numbers are equal. <laughs> um, I push this seam allowance. I'm facing the back of my pants. I'm gonna push the seam allowance to my right, which is actually the right back. And when I sew my front, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And when I do that, what happens is it offsets the seam allowance right here at the juncture of the crotch intersection. And it's really helpful for kind of making it easier to sew. So that's one of my tips is that if you always push it to your right or always push both to your left, then they'll be offset when you, as you're facing them. Yeah, twill, oh, okay. I'm gonna top stitch and I don't have that problem. And these are stretch jeans. So 
so I'm not too worried about it. I'm also going to double needle top stitch. Man, his booty looks big. Oof, that got a little bit uneven. Whoa. Don't look at that too closely. All right, our, our backs are done. So Trishinist, I like that. It's industrial, 8700-7. It has the electronics. Um, I missed what Anna's cooking. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move to the fronts. Um, if you are looking into getting an industrial sotritionist, I do have a video about it so you can kind of see like what to expect. Um, it's a long video, but it has timestamps and you can just look at the parts that are kind of what you're curious about. But mine has the electronics and I, electronics and I explain what the difference is, differences are between getting them and not getting them, why I like them, why I don't. Um, there's also a video about, oh, sorry, of uh, I race a machine with electronics against a machine without electronics and a home machine. And we, I sew the exact same thing and I kind of give you like a synopsis of what the difference is. Especially since the item I sew, I sew really fast and I know it really well. So it was a really good like test. So if you're kind of interested in that, you can check it out. I'm not a machine mechanic, but I have had industrials for a long time and I just, I like them myself, so. I don't know why my commands still aren't working right and I haven't spent any time to check it out. Why tradition tradition say, oh, right, exactly. I think also if something just works, then why question it, you know? Um, like the fly is something I've been thinking a lot about. All right, so I am gonna do the fly. Actually, let's do the pockets. What do I wanna do first? Let's do the pockets, because I know you're getting nervous about doing your fly and it's gonna all be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna overlock this round edge. I didn't do the coin pocket, sorry, Nancy. Um, if you wanna do your little coin pocket, put it on the pocket facing that you want and you probably have little notches and you would, you know, hem the top pocket and then top stitch it on, just like you did the back pocket, but you can leave the raw, bottom of your pocket, your coin pocket raw to line up with this curved edge. All right, so I'm gonna overlock this curved edge here. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. No, I'm sorry, Shim, that's a bummer. All right. So the way I like my pockets, this is one of my quirks, is that I like seeing the print of the pocket when I look inside my pants. Not, I don't like the good side of the print to show to my hand only. So, <clears throat> I may be a little confusing for the next couple of minutes of what I call the right side and the wrong side. So I'm gonna call this the right side of the fabric, okay? Just so you know, all right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pocket facing on here to the corner of the pocket. I'm just gonna top stitch it down. Again, you know, I'm not switching between thread colors just to save time here, but you can, you know. <laughs> you always forget it. <laughs> yeah, that's one, my feedback from my husband, like when I sew in pants, he's like, can you please leave the coin pocket in? <laughs> my bias <laughs> of not using it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't realize you used that. Like, I just can't even imagine using it. <laughs> All right, so, all right, we're gonna put this 
right sides together. This is the inside of the pocket, all right? And we're just gonna sew around this uh, opening here. I think this opening is a half inch seam as well. You can use these instructions to sew just about any jeans, by the way. But this fly is uh, the kind with a separate fly facing. And I kind of talked in the middle, in the beginning about why it's not quite my favorite. All right, I'm gonna trim this down to a quarter inch. And I'm gonna clip the curve. And we're gonna repeat for the other side. Yeah, I, right, Raquel, I know. I, it's it's just nice to see it, you know? I like being able to see it. My hands, you know, they deserve a, a little perk here and now, now and again, you know, but uh, they don't get to see the inside of my pockets <laughs> or my good pocket fabric, so. All right, we'll trim. All right, so now's a good time to iron this little opening here. So let's go fire up the iron and do that. It'll be a little easier to top stitch it. So when I do this part right here, this is the inside of the pant. Right? And what I do is I kind of pull this opening like this so that I can see a tiny sliver of the jeans. Remember, I clipped my curve. This is a pocket without a, a pocket stay or a tummy shaping panel. Um, so it doesn't go to the center front as well. So it's sewn a little differently. So some pockets go all the way to the center front and they get secured right here. So yours may be a little different. Just follow the directions if so. Um, and definitely that is one of my weak points. So if you look in any of my other jean making videos, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I kind of fail at sewing pocket stays almost every time. I forget to do it. I get really excited and I do the fly and then I f do the pockets and then they didn't get secured to the... <laughs> Everyone in chat will tell you. All right, so see, when you make sure that you can kind of see a little bit of the denim, you won't see the lining on the right side. And this is one time where you do want to take a little bit of care because you can see how visible this white would be against the denim here. So make sure that you kind of tuck it in there really good. You'll be happier later that you just took a, like a 30 seconds longer to iron this. All right, and then let's do this one here. Oh, I love that idea, Raquel. You line your yokes with the fabric, like in your jeans. Oh my gosh. I love that idea. I gotta, I gotta remember to try that sometime. Now I really wish mine was like that. Oh, I'm so glad you shared that. I feel like maybe I've seen that in photos. I don't know. It, when you, when you have the time to like really get into a certain style of sewing, like you're in like the jeans mode, you can do so many fun things, and you, you really discover other ways to kind of make it personal. <laughs> you know? All right. So now we're going to top stitch the opening here. And remember, you really want that pocket lining to stay hidden. Don't stretch out your pocket opening. But um, it'll probably be a little wavy in some stretch fabrics. It'll bounce back in the laundry. Don't worry about it. Do I want one or two rows? I think I'm going to do two rows. I'm into the double today. The wash of this denim 
is kind of old school. <laughs> Do you guys want me to brighten up the screen at all? No, yolks on jeans aren't usually lined, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds fancy. What I like about that is uh, it kind of goes into the, the philosophy of hanger appeal. Ooh, Adina. You're not gonna sell it, you're gonna sew it. Momotaro jean, okay. Oh, do they have that in the pattern? Ooh. Who makes the MoMA Taro jeans? Or is that or is that a brand? And you got the idea from that. Is that what you're saying? So no sell, yeah, okay. Someone in the guild is uh, trying to de-stash some fabrics. By the way, I don't know if you all noticed that. All right, so we have our pocket. Okay, now if you got your pocket stitching here a little bit wobbly, here's the great thing about it, is that when it's against, like, so if you're looking at it, like, look at this, I did get my wobbly, look at that. See how far away it is from the edge and how narrow it is there. So, um, <clears throat> I, when, when are we going fabric shopping together, Adina? We gotta do that. So when it's against this pocket facing, like you don't even notice it, right? because the, the blue of this will, you know, kind of blend in with your wobbly edge. So don't take it out. You don't want to backstitch in the middle there either. I mean, I don't know. All right, so now I'm going to um, French seam the bottom edge here. And so I'm gonna put this wrong sides together. <laughs> I'm doing this correctly this time, but I know it's probably a little confusing what I'm calling all that. You don't have to do a fancy French seam. Like nobody is gonna see this. So all you're really doing is trying to get a nice little finished edge on the inside of your jeans, right? So I just did, you know, a little narrow seam. Now I'm gonna flip it. You can iron it. And then we'll, we'll encase that sewn edge there, right? If you need, if yours is really steep, your curve, you can clip it a little too. That will help it. All right. If you're doing um, thread, different colored threads like I am, this side right here is facing the pair of jeans. So the navy blue is what's gonna show on the inside of the pants. And those are sometimes things you wanna think about. Cause say you were doing, you know, black and white <laughs> bobbin and top thread, maybe one would be more visible on the inside of the pants than the other. All right, so this pocket's done. And so now I'm just gonna stitch it to the top and the sides here. Let's get this all nice and flat like this. Nice and relaxed. And I'm gonna stitch it down here and stitch it down on the sides. Hi Ellen, how's it going? Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> All right. Sometimes that happens. See, it's not lining up perfectly. I could do better. Oops, sorry. Pants are starting to get bigger. All right, so let's finish this one up. And we're gonna do this wrong sides together again. Wrong, remember? because I like my fat pockets this way. If you're sewing them from a pattern though, they don't have you do it the way I'm doing it. That's why I'm telling you the, cur the way they would be saying it. They always have the right side of the fabric showed the inside of the pocket. Hey, Shasha, how's it going? Or Aisha, how's it going? <laughs> uh, this, uh, I'm going to top stitch this from the side so they look the same on the inside. So 
that means I have to start from this end. I should be ironing this. I know. All right, and now we're gonna line this one up along the edges here. Oh, that one is turned okay. I was about to turn that corner a little better, but it's okay. Right there. And right there, all right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so now we're gonna sew our zipper fly. And these are the pieces that I'll be using. And my zipper, the fly facing, this is the facing and this is the shield. I sometimes accidentally call this the extension. It's the shield. I don't know why I always do that. Um, I'm gonna interface this piece here because I like it to be a little less um, wishy, wishy washy, you know? So let's do that. Um, where are some scissors? This is almost wide enough for this, so that'll work for me because it'll get caught in the seam allowance. Just hacking it. <laughs> Something like that. I like to uh, interface it with the right side of the fabric on top. I don't. I don't like ironing against the interfacing for some reason. For some reason, it just feels not. I don't know. I just don't like it. Oh my gosh! I need some real scissors over here. I haven't gotten it yet, Raquel. You have to, wait, there's no seam allowance on that pattern, Terry? Oh, you wanna know where the, you got this interfacing? This is right here. Hola, Marcella. Um, this right here is the Trico from Waywack. I can link it in the chat. Um, I, I, I found it's kind of an interfacing I discovered accidentally, but I really love it. I, me and SF101 have broken up. It was a messy breakup, <laughs> but I'm moving on. <laughs> um, so this is the Trico by Waywack. Um, I'll, I'll find it on their site and, and put it in the, the chat. So Trico is usually used for, um, here we go, knits and stretchy things. That is also why I bought this. There we go. Oh. Yeah, Terry, yeah, you're absolutely right. All right, so I got this thinking it was gonna be stretchy going the length of it, and I got it for knit sewing, and it wasn't, and I was disappointed. And then um, I started using it, and I just love it for everything. Because it really bonds to the fabric, and it makes the fabric, look <laughs> how crooked that is. <laughs> it really makes the fabric feel, like if, it makes it feel as one. So, all right, we're gonna sew across the bottom of this, right sides together, at whatever seam allowance your pattern piece has. All right. Hope I can remember how to put this together. Yeah, I don't know, Shim, especially for things that could have a flat felled seam, you know? All right, so we'll press this and we're going to overlock. Oof, I really want my directions. Let me get my directions really quick. I'm pretty sure I have them handy right here. Let's see, where are they? Please reveal yourself. Pam, 
pant closure, pant closure. Dang it. Hmm. Sorry, second. I just wanna make sure I don't lead you guys astray because I like the other style better. <laughs> and I know it better. Here we go. Here we go. I love how I've been using half inch seam allowances, five eighths. <laughs> All right. I have a whole video on how to do this. <laughs> I still need to make sure because this one is always like, okay. You know? All right, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlock a few things. I'm just look, looking at these directions really quick, okay. I am, Libby, I am using the ash method. These were already cut out. Yeah, yeah, it, it is cool, Alex. I have a heel lift. Three, a quarter inch. Yeah, quarter inch, my goodness. All right, so I'm going to um, overlock this, these two edges together, this on the uh, shield, right? We're gonna do the straight edge here and the curved edge here. And we're gonna do both center fronts, all right? If you have a zigzag, that is fine too. You just wanna finish this edge because we're not gonna be able to get back in here later to finish it, okay? So finish it now. Where's my bad scissors? We all just saw me using them. I just wanna have them ready. My machine's making a funny noise. All right. One. Now we're gonna do the seam here. I'll cut my serger flush here, but I'm gonna secure the tail there. Okay, we're gonna do the center front now. I don't think it needs oiling. It sounds to me like something is kind of close right now. And I do have the, the width kind of narrow. but I haven't oiled it. Hey, Lily, how's it going? Nice to see you. All right. Oh, that's right. It's crazy. I'm hemming rounded patch pockets. I have enough hands. <laughs> yeah, 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 Alex. That kind of thing. And it's funny because in that video I mentioned earlier about like um, pitting my machines against each other, I myself was actually surprised by the end of it what I realized I love most about my machine. And it's the heel lift and the fact that it stops needle down. Those two things are like having two extra helping hands. When the needle stops down automatically, it holds your work. And um, you know, just using my foot, you know, I'm just doing this with my heels right now. That's so great. And the knee lift is great too, but I did, um, I used one of those for a really long time, full time, 40 hours a week sewing. And uh, that did have some repercussions on my hips. You know what I mean? 
most people don't sew that much, so it's not going to be a thing you have to worry about. But it was a huge difference in quality of life when I switched it out. So, all right. Yeah, you look for it. I, when I had a knee lift, I'd go to my home machine and I'd be like, or my surgeon, I'd be like, with my knee, like, wow. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me just look at this. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, secure the zipper to the fly shield, right? The zipper is kind of long. What a bummer. Um, and yeah. I wish it wasn't this long. Uh, let's uh, let's secure my serger tail too. I'm just gonna secure it here. I should have done that little trick, which I've kind of gotten out of the habit of trying, you know. Here, I'm gonna do this on this side so that the blue thread shows on the right side. You don't have to do this, I do. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty bad. <laughs> that looks kind of terrible. All right. All right, so line up your zipper tape. This is kind of important. You're gonna line up your zipper tape with all this extra tape here to the bottom. And that's really important because you need the space below it, all right? It's okay if your zipper's too long, but don't pull your zipper down. Make sure you line up your tape to the bottom of the shield. And so one of the things that I've learned about this style of this fly with the separate fly facing is that this moment right here is important. You need to just do a very narrow seam allowance. So I'm going to do a quarter inch, which is the width of my overlock stitch, this little overlock stitch, right? So we're just going to do a quarter of an inch seam. You could put a zipper foot in as well to get nice and close. I, I uh, might have to do that. All right, so we have our zipper on here, right? And the reason that this is important is because if you do anything larger at this point, the zipper is going to be more exposed at the end. It'll be a little too close to the fold edge of the opening of the fly. All right. Oh, nice, Lily. Yeah. Yeah, I, I explained at the beginning that I've had this cut out for over a year and it's because my very first stream of this got, well, it just got corrupted. And so the part one didn't do, um, I think I'm doing a, like a straight leg, Alexandra. I'm not sure. The sewing directions will be the same for any of the versions though. So it'll be okay. You can do whatever um, style you like, but yeah, you're right. It does come in like four different legs. Mine's kind of straight. I'm kind of boring that way. <laughs> I have Adina, but I don't really know how you go about that. Yeah, I have the gingers too. So, all right, so my next step is same thing. We're gonna sew this assembly here. We're gonna put this right sides together on the right front. So anytime someone or me, myself, says right front or left front or left back or right back, I mean as if you're wearing the pants. So I know we're looking at this right now like this, but this is the my right leg, okay? So we're gonna put this face down. We're gonna line it up, the extension to the top there, or the shield. And now we're gonna sew it, it on again. You could have done this all in one step, to be honest. Right sides together, just like that. And now we're gonna turn it. I think we top stitch this right now, right? Yep, turn and top stitch, all right? So we're gonna top stitch along the says. So you see this little notch? That's the one thing that when you cut out your pieces, don't forget this little notch here at the waist. That is your center front, and that's where your flies come together and meet. And so do you see this amount between the notch and the seam here? That's all the underlap I'm gonna get with this fly. All right, so we're gonna top stitch this. All 
All right, and then I'm gonna trim my thread here, my back stitch threads, and just make sure everything's still looking somewhat neat. All right, so we're gonna clip right here. See that? And clip that. All right, we're gonna set that aside right now. And now we're gonna sew the, um, I'm just like making sure this is what I'm doing, right? Yes. Okay, so now you have your fly facing, this guy here that we just overlocked. And we're gonna put it to the center front here. And we're gonna sew at the full seam allowance now. All right, Shim, have a nice movie night. I hope you all get better soon. So you should be sewing on the line of where that notch is. Yeah, this is half inch seams. Okay. Probably should have done that going like from the bottom up. <laughs> Would have been made more sense, huh? All right. And now we're going to press this to the inside and I'm gonna do this in the iron. This is definitely a classic step I would kind of shortcut and we're not going to right now because it's the center of our fly and it should look nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this and I'm gonna pull it kind of taut like this. And then now I'm gonna turn it to the inside. It'll turn to the inside nicer if you do that first pressing because it makes this nice and flat right here. So now turn that to the inside and press it again. I'm gonna press this pocket while I'm here so it lays flatter. Opportunistic pressing. All right. All right, um, and then I'm, thinking, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna clip that and top stitch it, right? Yep, clip and top stitch. Okay. So again, we're gonna we're gonna top stitch this fly. We can clip it first if we want. We're gonna clip up to that point again. Don't go all the way to where it's folding back, all right? If you need to go further later, you can go further later, but you can't undo a clip, okay? So I'm just gonna do it to like close to that fold there, all right? All right, now I'm gonna top stitch this. And I think I'm gonna start the stitching down here in the seam allowance so I don't have to have a back stitch. That's just me. All right, let's pull this down. And I'm gonna brighten this up a tiny bit so you can kind of see what's happening. Meow. One more. Like that? That look good? A little brighter? Maybe less sharpness? How's that? Okay. I'm not gonna run an ad, YouTube. Go away. Okay. So I'm just starting in the seam allowance so I don't have to back stitch, and now I'm coming to the fold of the center front and we're just gonna edge stitch this, okay? Straight up the edge. Like that, all right? So now this is what we have so far. We have the um, right front and the left front looking like this, right? We have our little pieces turning back. I like the angle though too, Raquel. It just depends on where it's at. I like the angle because then it kind of hides it behind sometimes. So it just depends. Okay. And then now we're gonna pretty much kind of finish this off now. Yeah. All right, <laughs> we're gonna overlap that. 
think that's what, do you do the, do you do the zipper to the, the fly facing first? I know I'm the expert here, huh? <laughs> This is just not my, my method. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, yeah, you do. Interesting. Wow, you really wait a long time to do that lower crotch seam. Okay, so uh, we're gonna l overlap this edge right here up to this notch. So remember that notch I was telling you about over here? So um, make sure that you're covering up because you don't really wanna see any of, of this, right? So we're, we're covering it up. So make sure you get this nice and lined up here. And then we're gonna stitch this zipper to the curved one, this one right here, right? So I'm holding this down pretty firmly and I'm picking this up. And um, you know, actually what we could do, yeah, this is just awkward. So I'm gonna hold it down like this. And now I'm gonna pick up this zipper like this. Don't let anything shift, okay? Ugh. I like to do this upside down too. So let me show it to you upside down. I find the sewing is better upside down because you um, can keep the zipper to the left, right? So we'll just, we'll start over, right? So we have our right front and our left front. We're gonna line these up. We're gonna put this center front to the notch there. I'm gonna cheat and put mine a little bit more, but that means my pants are gonna get a little tiny bit smaller like an eighth of an inch smaller. They're stretch. <laughs> All right, and then pick this up here. And we only want this curved piece and the zipper, right? So I'm gonna pick these up like this. Flip. And we're gonna stitch it down. Now this is a good seam to stitch twice, if you can. I don't really have the space, but I'm gonna still do it. I'm gonna double check before I do my second seam though, just to make sure that everything's looking good when it's nice and relaxed. And it is, okay. So then I'm gonna do one more seam here. And usually what I would do if my zipper tape was wider or I was using my zipper foot, is I would put one stitch hair along the tool tape and one closer to the zipper. And the reason I say two rows is because it's just a, a high stress area. You know, you're yoinking down the zipper you know, so I'm just gonna put a second row. See, I, I should have my zipper foot on, but I don't like my zipper foot. It's really slippery, really thin too. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch this curved thing, you know, that like the ubiquitous curved stitching on the front of your fly, right? So um, we're gonna pull the fly shield out of the way. This right here. We can, uh, you can undo your zipper, let's see. Is that easier? I guess. The legs are kind of in the way here. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out a nice way to, I mean. Yeah, I just do not like sewing it this way. This is so awkward. Because your shield's in the way, you know? For me, this method feels like, and, and a lot of people do it this way. It, I feel like this method is very intuitive if you, if you want to just place things and stitch them down. You don't have to figure it out sewing it inside out. Uh, but I, I think it's hard to get everything lined up. All right, so right now I have the fly shield folded back, right? Sorry, my presser foot keeps going up and down. And if you have a little top stitching guide for your fly facing, this curved piece, go for it. You might wanna use it now. Um, I can feel mine there. I'm just gonna do one row. This looks curved, doesn't it? It just pulls. All right. I'm just stitching through the front and the curved fly. Where's the curve down? Way here, way down here. 
And so remember how our zipper tape was hanging down. Oh, look at that. I've got a little bit of slack. Eek. Remember how I was saying that zipper tape right here, all this extra tape hangs down. That's why, so you don't stitch through your zipper, okay? All right, so we have our, our fly there and we're gonna put a bar tag here at the very, very end. So don't do that yet. And now I think we're to the finally doing our crotch seam, right? So we're gonna put this, or I don't think you actually do it that way. I think you top stitch it, right? Wait, do they also this um, right sides together, do they? Oh yeah, 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 they do. Okay, yeah, okay. So we're gonna sew this right sides together, this lower crotch curve now. All right. And you're gonna try and get as close up here as possible, but don't worry about if you have a gap because we're gonna tidy everything up with some top stitching, all right? So we're gonna sew this, whatever your seam allowance is. So basically this seam line should line up with that notch at the top. So that's the seam, seam allowance. Um, I'm just gonna go just to the left of my clip. Let's get rid of some of these threads so you can see this better. So here's my clip right here. I, this is interesting that my shield is not lower than this. I don't know why that is. That's not right, by the way. I don't know why that happened. That, that's, that's on me. That's probably something like um, I changed my pattern to fit me and I forgot to change one of the pattern pieces. Your shield is probably lower than the fly facing and that's good. Hi, Marilyn, is the zipper up too high? The zipper up too high. You mean this right here? It's just too long. So I'll trim it when I do the um, waistband, that's fine. But the, this shield should be lower or this, uh, really this piece right here is too long, the fly facing. It should have ended right here. I just need to adjust my patterns probably, but that's okay. Yours is probably correct. All right, so now um, I'm gonna flip this over. And remember how we, I talked to you about the back having the, pushing that center back seam to your right? Well, this is the same thing now. If we are facing this pant, you wanna press this lower crotch seam to your right as if you're facing your pants, all right? And now we're gonna to top stitch this whole shebang. So I'm gonna put my shield back. So put the zipper just as the way it's gonna be, right? This is how it's all gonna be right here. And now this is your opportunity to do any decorative top stitching that you want. Like if you have your signature style or something, um, you have plenty of room. So reassure yourself, look at how high mine is. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this fly is so low. What a bummer that I, that happened. <laughs> Yours is probably looking better than mine. I've made this pan so many times. I don't know why that is. Okay. All right, so this little pucker, you wanna watch this. So make sure that you're pulling this. I think actually what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take out this seam right here. That is just too far in where this seam is. I can get a better look, I'll show you. I'll show you in just a second. Let me take out this last few stitches right here. Because of that little pucker right here. Let's see here. Let's get rid of some of these threads too. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> oh, you're not feeling good, Nancy. It's a bummer. Okay, so you see how, well, remember when we stitched the center front edge? You, you really want this seam to be Sorry, so remember when we stitched this front center front edge right here? You want this curved seam to basically line up with that, all right? That way, because if you do it too far, what'll happen is that you'll get a little pucker there, all right? And we don't really want that. 
Yeah, that pucker, exactly, Mullen. I know what you mean, Jelly Bean. Let's get rid of this thread here. So yeah, so I can see that my top stitching is right there. Oh, it's this top stitching, not that one. It's the top stitching on this curved here. That's what we want to line up to. So I kind of want to go right up to that. I'm going to start at the top. And then I'm going to blend in with the stitching I already did. I'm going to take out a couple of these stitches so that they don't poke out on the right side. Or at least just pull. Make sure they won't. There we go. All right. Let's see if that'll be a better... Yeah, yeah. So that got rid of that little pucker right there. Now, when we go to top stitches, there, I see, I knew that thread right there was going to show. Where are you? Where are you? Pull you to the back instead of trimming you. Here, is this it? Where is it? It's right here. I'm looking for this thread right here. Oh, there, I see it, I see it. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to top stitch this curve. Oops. We're going to top stitch this curve here, right? And we're pressing that seam allowance over to my left leg. And when I get up to here, this is where you want to make sure that this is all looking the way you want it. And um, this is this is one of the other reasons I don't really like this method is that you can go up to here, but mostly like in the directions, they show you to keep going, go over and go down. And I'll, I'll do that right now. Um, but it means you're stitching over what you've already stitched, which is kind of weird, you know. So some of the keys of sewing this and not being stressed about like, you know, sewing through your brass zipper are making sure that you lined up that twill tape to the bottom of your zipper fly pieces, right? And um, then you won't have to worry about that. And the other key is making sure, this stitching looks terrible, <laughs> you used a really narrow seam allowance when you sew your zipper in the first step. Those will give you the best chances with this style. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is I usually sew straight across my fly. This is kind of my signature. I sew straight across here. And then I'm gonna do a fake bar tack because I don't have a, a zigzag stitch set up right here, okay? Right here, and this, this bar tack right now is going all the way through. If you don't do this stitch right here, you do need this bar tack, whether you have the straight stitch or not, you don't have to do that. But you need this, and you need it to go through all of your layers, because this is gonna hold your shield over your zipper and make it look tidy, and yours is gonna be down here, so. All right, and then you're done, by the way. <laughs> all right. And so when we sew in the waistband, which is coming up soon, we'll shorten the zipper. But that looks pretty good. It looks pretty hidden, but the thing is, because this is a stretch fabric, it'll do this. So, okay. Side seams um, and inseams. So I'm gonna do a, a flat felled seam on the inside. Have a discount code for these jeans for the ash. They may have one if you sign up for their newsletter, Nancy. All right, so I'm gonna put these uh, wrong sides together and we're gonna sew this whole inseam first. I'm gonna do a flat filled seam. You don't have to do a flat filled seam. Uh, it, what a flat filled seam is, is kind of similar to a French seam 
in that it's completely enclosed, but it's gonna be actually stitched down to the pants, which makes it a little lower profile. And now look, we can see that my crotch seams are offset, right? Which is great, because it's kind of bulky. Like even my machine's gonna be like, Ugh, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna pin this right here. This is a non-negotiable spot. And on a lot of jeans patterns, what you're gonna find is that when you're sewing from the hem up, there's usually a notch. You see this notch right here at the knee? That matches, all right? Between here and here, often they don't match and you need to stretch it to fit. It's very easy to do that, but you need to do that. So make sure that you don't get off here. So the, in between the knee and the crotch is where you need to match it. Let me zoom out a little bit too. Really? That's funny. Yeah, you can, yeah, the hammer is a really great tip, Raquel. It really makes a big difference. I, I didn't believe it does, but it really does. Hammer, you an actual hammer. <laughs> to do this flat felt seam too, you're gonna need about uh, at least a, a 5 8 inch seam, it'll be easier. Anything smaller is kind of a struggle, to be honest. Thanks for all not saying the, that word in my chat too. Just so everybody knows, you don't say that. We call the, the great panini the panini for a reason. <laughs> YouTube does not like it when we use words relating to recent events involving masks and stuff. <laughs> okay. I ran out of bobbin thread. Where did I run out of bobbin thread by the way? I didn't run out with my, I ran out right on that, that bar tag seam. So that was really lucky that I got it all. Oh, I didn't, I didn't um, wind another bobbin. It's okay, I still have some of this one here. Yeah, yeah, Terry, right? It helps so much. Metal for seams and plastic for other stuff. Oh, where'd you get a plastic hammer? What's a is it for that? Like, do they sell them for that? Very cool. Oh, Elena, you have. <laughs> Elena's out here making furniture with her jeans. <laughs> it's funny. So this, the flat felt seam is gonna be like the, like the traditional way jeans are sewn at the inseam. So if you have some store-bought jeans, you'll see that that's what yours probably look like. So remember what I said, match up to that knee notch right there. Hem to knee notch should match perfectly. If it doesn't, it's gonna be up to you whether you investigate why it doesn't. Um, it could be maybe you made a, um, a length adjustment on your pants and you forgot to do the other pair, you know? The other side, you know, the fronts versus the back. Tenderizing. <laughs> oh, that's smart, Aisha. You've done that too? That's really funny. That seems so like something I would do. <laughs> That's funny. See, look at how unforgiving stretch denim is. That's only where I sewed without a bobbin. You know? All right, so we went through the crotch juncture and now I'm just looking for those knee notches there. I'm pretty sure it's the, 
I don't know why I don't know this off the top of my head, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's the front that's longer than the back, but don't quote me on that. It gives you a little more ease in the crotch area. Um, you can take it out if you want. If that's how you fit your pants. That's completely fine. They're very common in menswear, and I personally think that that's what it's a holdover from is menswear. Okay, so um, I'm going to lift up. So this is the front pants sitting up, uh, facing up right now. You can see the back is wider than the front here. I'm going to lift. Oh, look at that straight sewing there. Oi. All right, and so I'm gonna lift this up. It's this, this is, um, that's actually not the one I wanted to cut right now. What the heck? Dang it. Sewing drama. I wanna trim this one, cause I wanna go like this over. I'm gonna leave that. You're not gonna tell. We're gonna flip it over, sorry. I wanna hem it that way with the front up facing up, but I wanna trim it like this. We're gonna trim the front, okay? So I have the back facing up and we're going to trim the seam allowance down on the front because we're going to hem over it. Basically, we're just going to hem this seam right on top. We need a sewing drama emote. You bought the... Oh, I thought you had this pair of pants, Nancy. Those Morgans are so good on you. Huh, I wonder what they use that for, Raquel. It must be for something. The reason I flip the pants this way too is that you're not in as much danger of trimming anything but the seam allowance. I'm hungry. Dang, a bunch of animals were just running on the roof. to see so many viewers today. Welcome in. I'm Sarami. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a weirdo. I've been sewing a long time. Now we, we do like live streams every other week now and I'll usually do a whole project during the week. Uh, we'll cut on Wednesdays, sew part one Thursday, sew part two Saturday. This week wasn't anything goes week. I've had these ash jeans cut out for over a year, so I'm just finally getting them done, especially since my original um, video, the part one got corrupted. So it still says processing in my thing. Like it's been two years and it still says processing. So I should have sewed this with the back facing up and I'm gonna do that so that my yellow top stitching is on this side. So um, I'm just remembering how to do flat filled seams apparently. So I'm just gonna re-sew this seam right now so my yellow thread's showing. That's all I'm doing right now. I like the look of that and it'll look more traditional. So I'm just re-sewing it. When I originally started sewing this with the, the bobbin, <clears throat> when the bobbin ran out, that was the correct way. And when I went to sew it with the bobbin, it felt so weird and now I know why. <laughs> oh yeah, that Allegro denim is really stretchy. D Nancy, you know that denim because it was in um, the, needle sharp subscription boxes. That's where I got my ash jean, my first pair of ash jeans. All right, so now, now if you're doing a flat fold seam on something like that's not denim, you might want to press this whole thing first. I don't really think it's necessary. So all we're going to do now, see how it's cut away, is we're just going to fold this over that cut edge and stitch it down. Easy peasy. You don't really need to hem it or I mean iron it unless you want to but I feel like you're you're gonna find this is pretty easy 
This is also your inseam. So you're really not gonna also, it's not a, it's not a high um, visual place, visible place, right? So if you get it a little wonky, if someone's looking there, they're really not your friend. You need to move on, right? I think I just ran out of bobbin again. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I feel like I ran, yeah, I did run out of bobbin. I only had a partial bobbin in it, that's okay. We have a full one now. That little machine was doing such a good job winding a bobbin. But a shirt, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the armholes of a lot of shirts have flat felt seams. I do that on the the men's shirts I make a lot of times. I've done it on, a, on like one archer. I'm going to have a, a back stitch here. I'm not going to take the time to not have a back stitch there. Usually I would. You guys know me. I don't like visible back stitches sometimes. Definitely not about all the rules, but sometimes you have your things that you like. All right, so I'm getting into this thicker, curvier area here of the rise. This is why you're going to find that having a wider seam allowance is kind of helpful and offsetting those seams is helpful. Just go slow. Hammer it, the seam if you need to before you sew it like they're talking about in the chat. It makes a, a big difference. It really mashes it down, but don't put holes in it. <laughs> you can get that Allegro at um, Hearts Fabric and you can use the 10% off, 10 so-so. Yeah, I am, Adina. I really only have like three feet of a Teflon foot, a zipper foot that is like kind of, you know, not great. It's fine, it's just, it's a narrow foot. You can't, you can't move the needle position on the industrial, so uh, it's just a very narrow foot. And um, I find that, I mean, I'm not the greatest like with perfect top stitching and stuff, not when I'm live streaming especially, right? And that thing makes it even worse. <laughs> that's the, I thought that's what Adina was talking about. Okay, so this is that edge right here where I cut. I think what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be inside the hem. I'm gonna trim the seam allowance right here a little bit more that I trimmed under here. I'm gonna fold this part a little bit extra. Boo boo. <laughs> I'm gonna have to trim this down a little bit so I can fold, over fold it a little bit. Boo boo, there we go. You guys aren't gonna tell, right? See? <laughs> it's a little baby flat felled seam. All right, now we're gonna put our out seams right sides together. Flip. And we're gonna, we're gonna have some jeans and then we're gonna do our waistband. Then we're gonna be done. Do I have extra fabric for the hem? Uh, I mean, I have the hem allowance. It'll be fine. Seems kind of bright. Is it too bright? Line it up on the seam line. And then all these little like threads from your back stitches and stuff, especially when you're using like the top stitching threads, sometimes you see how it'll fold back on itself. So I kind of look these over and make sure that just could be a quirk of my machine because um, I feel like all machines have their weird little quirks with how they do the stitches, you know? I know, I think, I think someone in chat, it might be Nancy, like her machine, her bobbin looks better than her top. You're not alone. It's fine, thank you, Terry. Terry, wait, aren't you going to Zaxby's today? Did you already go? Did you sneak away? Did Mullen go to bed? 
so nosy. <laughs> Just making sure all my threads are at the seam, like towards the seam allowance and not folded back into the garment. It's not the end of the world if that happens, but it's just more work for you later. You know, when your threads are poking out of your seam. All right, the other one. And we're gonna overlock this edge too. Just looking at my stitching there. We're gonna overlock this edge and we're gonna top stitch it. I'm only gonna to top stitch it the length, the side seam down to the bottom of the pocket because that's just a traditional way to do it. His works, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Still here yawning? Aw. <laughs> So now that you think your sojo's coming back, Mullen, what did you say you're making? The, the sleeveless hinterland in flannel? That'll be great. So um, last night, so just all you new people here, <laughs> I have an online community. It's free to join, sososoguild.com. But we had a show last night. I just wanted to preface this so you're not like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I don't want you to feel left out. I don't like it when I go to someone's chat and I feel left out like everybody knows everybody and I don't. They're, everyone here is very welcoming of new people. They love new people. They'll eat you for lunch. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, anyway, once a month we have a show where I um, answer questions but we also go over all the newly released patterns. And I've decided, and I bought the pattern yesterday, that I'm going to make the Closet Core Mitchell pants this coming up. Hey, Leah, how's it going? I'm gonna make the Mitchell pants in uh, October. I don't know why I'm trimming this. We're going to the serger. <laughs> Hoi! All right, uh, I'm gonna surge with my fronts facing up. So when I press the seam towards the back, it just looks nicer on the inside. I'm gonna trim this down. Do you guys hear it? Is it just that it's like, is it threaded funny? Oh God, this little bucket drives me crazy. Yeah, a little nervous, a little nervous. When you hear a weird noise, right? Mitchell pants, I knew Elena would say something. <laughs> I'm not sure when in October I'll do it because I wasn't planning on it. I'm not sure if I have fabric, so I have to check. those dumb little scissors go? The little green ones I was using earlier. Do they like, I don't know. These jeans are for me. Yeah, they've been cut out for over a year. <laughs> I have a few of them. They were cut out to make a how-to video. I actually recorded a whole how-to video and um, the denim was too dark. So I got a new pair of jeans, <laughs> but I couldn't use the video. I probably could if I doctored it, but uh, for something as, port as important as sewing jeans, I wanted it to look really nice. So um, I cut out this pair and then never sewed them. And I, I think if I do one, I wanna, do it with my favorite zipper fly methods. So. But I have sewn jeans a lot. You can look at the channel. No, I'm not making skinnies. It's almost done already. You just need to decide the length and hem it. 
The denim worker trousers. Wait, which ones are those? Sounds like an outboard. <laughs> Yay, Mitchell's Delwyn. Delwyn, I keep meaning to ask you. Um, now she's all <gasps> putting up, being put on the spot. <laughs> um, I keep meaning to ask you if you joined that Sandhill Sling group in the guild. And have you seen all the Sandhill Slings? And then I sewed one for a Zoom and, and recorded it. Turned out great. I made a purse version. Yeah, we got a little spicy at the end of the Ask a Sewing Question show, Malin. My version of spicy, where I brought up two things. One of them was the um, this new Instagram account about honest pattern re reviews, because I was kind of curious what everyone thought about it. And then the other one was about the, the letter that Ready to Sew sent out recently. You got Robert Kaufman, Maxima Poplin, and Khaki. Oh, it's a Poplin, but also a brown cotton twill. I think the twill would be great. I think a drapey twill would be great for those pants. Yeah, I did, Le Leah, absolutely. This one fits me pretty good straight out the gate, but yeah, I always have to, um, what is it? Raise the back. You did, oh, cool. You don't have to watch it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna top stitch this side seam. Me and my pelvic tilt go everywhere together. Just can't escape it. That's the bottom way that's supposed to be wrinkle resistant. Oh, I just sewed my brother a short sleeve Fairfield in something like that. It was, it's such an interesting fabric. I almost thought it was waterproof. All right, so right now what we're looking at is this is the front of the pant and this is the back of the pant. And I have the side seam pressed towards the back and I'm just gonna go to the bottom of the front pocket. So I'm gonna feel it through the pants. So, and this is just kind of just to flatten down your seam. Yeah, it makes it less bulky. Where's my, where's my bottom of my pocket? Oh, here it is, right here. And then sometimes people put a bar tack right here. You know, see, does that look kind of familiar? Right? Now we're gonna do the other side. One time I think I forgot to do the other side. <laughs> it happens, you know? Yeah, I have some plaid linen that I kind of want to make a pair out of. <laughs> but I really need some more solids in my life. You do, I'm absolutely doing the side ties. Oh, cool, Terry. That's awesome. Okay. So, um... That's what the flat felt seam looks like on the inseam, by the way. Nice and smooth, right? It looks really comfortable. That's why it's kind of worth doing. And it's not hard. It's, you know, looks pretty good. I mean, my stitching could be a little straighter. No bar tack. From I did just put a part. Oh, you mean right here? I'll probably put rivets later. Something's catching there. I put a bar tack right here. But I'll, I'll probably put rivets there, maybe. I'm kind of on the fence with rivets lately. I guess I could put a bar tack right now and then I don't have to do rivets. That sounds great, thanks. <laughs> Let's do that. I know someone else is gonna be like, wait, I wanted you to do rivets. I have done rivets and all the hardware many times on other jeans, so don't worry, there's a video for it. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to line up with that stitching there. Yeah, my rivets are done. Thanks. <laughs> oh yeah, hardware for the Mitchell. That's a good point. 
All right, um, so let me get my tag out. I only have three left, you guys. I gotta, I gotta get new ones. Uh, that's why I decided to use the donation someone gave me for is new tags. And I think I'm gonna put something on the tag in honor of them. Yeah, I don't like rivets either. I think they look cool. I just, I don't know. I don't really need them. Okay, so we have our waistband. So this is another thing I do a little differently. It, I have one interfaced one and I have one non-interfaced. This is a curved waistband, but you can sew the straight style or the curved the way I'm about to do this. You're kind of right, Jan, and hi. Nice to see you. You know, they just followed me on Instagram, Elena Goldstar. I always feel so special. I'm sorry, there's something with my nail right here. It's kind of like grabbing everything. All right, uh, so now I need to shorten my zipper. So I'm gonna pull down the um, pole here and then I'm gonna cut between the teeth here really carefully. I don't remove the teeth. You can if you want, I do not have that tool. So. Sorry, I won't be demonstrating that. Um, I'm just gonna be really careful. So it is good to note that, you know, when you're doing this, that you're not gonna be able to see your zipper while you're sewing it, the waistband on. So remember, like, just kind of put it in your head, like this zipper is not at the edge here. It's right here, right? And same with this one, it's not at the edge. So when you start, you need to remember that you're gonna be approaching it. So, is Malin taking off? Night, Malin. Thanks for uh, modding. <laughs> you still end up destroying rivets. Hi, Margaret. You throw your jeans in the dryer instead of ironing so you get burned off. Yeah. Hey, Beverly. Nice, Beverly. Ooh, that's awesome. You used to like rivets because you thought you needed to sew just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, my husband wasn't wearing a pair of the jeans and um, it's fine, he doesn't need, cause sometimes he didn't ask for the garment. It's for like a video someone's hired me to sew, right? And so I'll be like, hey, are you interested in this garment? And he'll be like, okay, you know, and, and then I'll say, well, you pick out the fabric and, and then so that there's more chance of him wanting to wear it. And he wasn't wearing the jeans. I finally decided to ask him and he said, it's because one of the rivets was cutting him. <laughs> And I looked and I was like, oh my God, what happened to this rivet? I don't know what happened to it. It might've gotten caught on something and I didn't, maybe I didn't install it all the way flush. So there's like a little lip. So yeah, uh, it looks like I didn't have enough denim. So I pieced together this waistband here. So I'm just gonna sew it together real quick. And I think I'm gonna top stitch this flat on either side. Why not? Right? Yeah, that does sound like a nice assortment of things, Beverly. Okay, so this is my bottom edge of my waistband. This is the inner waistband. Inner waistband. We're gonna sew the inner waistband on first. This makes it easier, okay? So we're gonna line it up right side to the inside of your jeans, just like this. You're gonna hang off your seam allowance, all right? And remember, we have to get by our zipper too. I was just thinking, maybe I should switch to navy blue thread, but it's okay. All right, where's my zipper? <laughs> it's right here. Okay, when I get to my zipper, I hand crank around it really carefully. And then I keep sewing. This is a little bit twisted right here, so I just wanna straighten this out so it's more relaxed. All right. Just line up all your notches if you have any. Don't forget your label if you want it because of the because I do the inner waistband first. It's easy to forget because I always forget. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, that's true, Christina. <laughs> I think also like putting your belt loops where you want them and need them, you know? Really, Beverly, the 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 men's <laughs> patterns by Word Me, that's so awesome. I love that. Oh, really, Jan? Do you not like curved waistbands maybe for you? Or do you just mean you don't like how yours turned out? This is looking a little short. I'm just gonna stretch it a little bit. <laughs> I think I just used way too much seam allowance here. Knowing me, this was supposed to be quarter inch seam allowance and I just made it a lot bigger. I think it's always moments like that that make people go, yep, not subscribing. <laughs> They're not gonna take it out and fix it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm just, see this, this is a good example. All these little like top stitch threads, they always get sucked back into my sewing. That's how my machine does it. So I'm just pulling those out, making it, keeping it look nice. Oh, cool, Lena. All right, so line up your center front so that you have some seam allowance hanging off. And remember, we're gonna sew over our zipper one more time. So we gotta be careful. We're approaching it. It's a little easier to see this time, right? I hand crank. Ooh, that scared me. All right, there we go. Oh, see, look, there's one of my top switch threads. That's what I'm talking about. I always don't, don't like that. They suck back into my seam. There we go. Let's look at it. This is just threads, okay. Inspection. Loki went to the vet yesterday, speaking of inspections, and he got a clean bill of health. He's so amazing. So my belts got lost when we moved recently. Like we moved like two years ago and I just found them this summer. My husband just found them this summer. I was like, I knew I had belts. <laughs> so now I'll put belt loops back on my pants. I just stopped putting belt loops on my pants because I couldn't find my, my, uh, my belts. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the outer waistband right sides to this one here, all right? And I'm just gonna do the top edge first. We'll do the center front part at the end, okay? I'm just making sure I have the inner curve to the inner curve. So we're just gonna sew this whole seam. We don't have to worry about the zipper. We just sew in, okay? All right, I'm, I got it going and now I'm just gonna kinda line up this whole thing to the waistband and make sure that it's actually gonna fit because this one, A, was interfaced so sometimes things shrink, right? And then uh, B, we noticed my lining one, my inner one was a little bit different in size. So, all right, looking good. Sometimes I like to interface the inner waistband too. This one feels like it could have benefited from that. Waistbands are really personal though. I really like a, like a firm waistband that doesn't stretch. Sometimes people make them on the bias. Um, I never cut mine on the bias. I don't like it. I don't like my waistband getting bigger over the course of the day, especially because I have kind of a blurple for a tummy. And I just, the last thing I want is nothing to slip under, you know, by the end of the day. So I like it to be rigid. The ri more rigid, the better. Ooh, look at this. I'm getting, I'm cutting it close here. Hmm, I don't lag like that. What, what the heck? Let me, I gotta straighten that out a little bit. I, I, <laughs> oh, that's smart, Christina. Hmm. That's a bummer, Jan. I mean, do you have more fabric? So you could take it off and do it again maybe. 
How is band roll in waistbands? Um, uh, I th it's very stiff and stable. I'm not sure I could use it for a curved waistband though. I feel like everyone's talking about that did not do anything and that's just because of the angle of that. All right, I'm just come to deal with it. As long as I have seam allowance here, it's fine if I don't have the same amount on this piece as I do this piece. Seam line is everything, right? You have all that wiggle room between your seam line and the seam allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna, um, we're gonna sew the center front edge. Now, this isn't my strong suit sometimes because what I have found, <clears throat> what I have found is that, let's look at it this way. So there's a few things you need to think about right now. And, and you don't get much opportunity later so um, this is a good time to think about it. So the first thing is you want this seam to match going across, right? Because when this is on this side here and it's turned under, right? You want this seam to line up with that one. And this is looking pretty good, all right? The other thing that I find is that if this center front is at a little bit of an angle, what happens is if you line up your waistband to the center front, and you just sew the end of your waistband. Let's look at this one here. If you just sew the end of your waistband, sometimes it'll look, it'll be at an angle because it wasn't taken into consideration to straighten out your center front seam. So like, look at this one here. This one's kind of messy, right? But look at how this is so much shallower if I line it up to there, right? This is such a good example. If I were just to sew this seam right here, parallel to this cut edge, my waistband would be at an angle like this, right? So that's why I'm mentioning this. If you don't wanna worry about this, don't worry about it. That's how the pattern is drafted, you know? It's just one of those things like when you start getting into, want to, like fine tuning some of the details, um, you, you know, it's your third pair of jeans, you kinda of wanna elevate things. That's what I'm looking for personally. So that's what I say, it. So that's why I say it. So, you know, if I look at that right there, I barely have seam allowance on this under piece here which is the, out, the right side, but that is something I am thinking about. Here, I'll just use a um, marker so you can see it. It does seem really stiff. I saw that a, a Jen Stern was using it for, well, was she gonna use it in the TDCO stuff? And then I think she ended up using Velcro instead. Yeah, I hate those angles too. I feel like you could do a really good job sewing it and then that kind of brings down all your effort. When you did a good job, but maybe the pattern just didn't account for that, right? This side looks really good and it's underneath, right? It's just this a visual thing and, and really big deal, right? The blue is gonna be on top of the blue. It's gonna blend in, but your top stitching is gonna give it away. Yeah, exactly. And this is a curve. These curved ones tend to do this even worse. All right, so we're gonna, um, I, I really barely have seam allowance on that piece there. Eek! Look at that. Sheesh. Hmm. All right, so when you sew this end, leave this flat. Don't fold it up like this. All the books, all the, ink, the directions will say to do that. Don't do that. This piece is shrink, shrink a little bit because of the interfacing, I think. I think that's really what's going on here. And this right here is loosey-goosey because it does no interfacing. All right, so I'm just gonna sew right next to my center front seam. So sew your seam allowance there. And I'm gonna reinforce this little corner here. Look at that. Oh, I can't, I can't do that. I have to actually, I think I'm gonna have to go for a slightly angled front because I don't have the seam allowance for that. Eee! Look at that. That's gonna come back to bite me. Hmm. What's my backup plan right now? I like backup plans. Should I take this out 
and try and ease more into the center front. How do I think this is gonna wear? Do I think that's gonna hold? It does feel like it's gonna hold. All right, we'll stick with it. All right, we're gonna sew this seam too. So see, this is a better example of what it should look like, right? This edge is folded up, this one is left straight, all right? And then we're gonna sew a nice parallel seam straight down. Again, I'm gonna reinforce this little corner here. All right. And now I'm gonna trim this corner. Don't trim anything down here, all right? Like that. That's why I reinforce it. It makes me really nervous trimming denim <laughs> close to these corners. All right, now we're gonna turn it. If you watch denim experts, they're really good at this part. Yeah, of course, Adina. They're really good at this part. They're better than me, for sure. Like I said, if you wanna specialize in something, you can really elevate your sewing when you start looking at all the different resources out there. So I'm just gonna pop, pop out my corners. And this is another moment where we need to make sure that our waistband is the same height from left to right, right? So we're gonna double check it again here. Cause you don't wanna find out later. <laughs> you wanna find out right now. And I often have to like stand up and look at it cause I can't quite tell when I'm sitting down. So I'm gonna flip this out so it's relaxed, all right? Let's see, pull the zipper up. Cause see this side looks a little higher. Oh wait, no, wait a minute. it's okay. I don't think it's okay. Um, I think I'm going to shorten this side a little bit. Yeah, it's exactly, I meant to say that, Elena, thank you for saying that. It is a little bit more, it's seen more in men's trousers. People who do alterations use it a lot. Yeah, it's Jan, that's smart. All right, so um, you might not be doing denim, right? You might be doing something a little lighter weight. And this is now when you're gonna wanna take this to this, the iron and start ironing all this because the denim, you don't need to iron quite as much. I'm going to, just because, I don't know. I feel like my chat has called me out one too many times about not ironing. <laughs> and they're right. <laughs> And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna iron all this, like this is my whole waistband, right? I'm just gonna iron it all like flat, right? Maybe I'll press these two seams together. So let's pull, let's turn the pants inside out. It'll be easier. If you have an ironing board, it'll be easier too because um, this is a flat surface, you know? So a lot of times these waistbands, the, the um, seam allowance will meet here in the middle and I like that. Oh, here's my scissors, I found them. Okay, I'm just waiting for my iron to warm up a little bit. So we're just gonna press the seam. Especially this top edge here. We're just making sure that, um, cause this is the top edge that's gonna 
fold down like this. And when I, when I press the seam, you can even press the seam open. That'll help too, but it's not 100% necessary. Just press it really good. I'm kind of pulling on it, tugging like this. Right? And we'll do the um, bottom too. Boop. Ooh, yeah, Elena Sherum. You guys have been so busy in the guild lately. I love it. I'll wake up and I'm like, 18 things. <laughs> I just pull it down a little bit just to get it nice and flat. Maybe the salami will be handy here, you know, like this. I would like a little more steam, please. Thank you. Okay. My guild, Adina, I think you know about it. SoSoGuild.com. It's a free community. You should join. I think you're in there. <laughs> I started, I got rid of Patreon and I started a community because, um, <laughs> are you calling me a noob, Jan? <laughs> Jan, thank you. Jan, you should become a member and then, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to. Oh, but that's monthly. Never mind. It's different. I was going to say, then you'd get emotes. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's not a real guild. It's my guild. It's just a community and it's kind of like a really beautiful Instagram, but there's so much more in there. Like Facebook has nothing on this place and there's no data mining. There's no ads. Nobody's selling you anything in there. I don't do sponsored junk. And, um, no, no, no. I just launched it at the beginning of this year. You're busy becoming a lawyer and stuff. But it is a nice place if you want to get your sewing fix in a nice, like, calm space. It's beautiful. Um, there's different paid groups, but you can join the guild for free and you get the whole community. And there's also free groups in there, too. Like, we just did the Sandhill Sling Sew Along by Noodlehead and all that's in there. And I did a Zoom and I showed how to sew it. And then, um, and that was a member created group. So anyone can create groups in there. Shem just created a book, a book, a group on um, sewing coats. Someone started one on Critical Role, the D&D &D group. <laughs> uh, the Australian, New Zealand uh, contingent is represented by a group in there. <laughs> Hi, Martina. How's it going? It's a guild with sewing wizards and warlocks. Exactly. It is not skill-based. All skills are welcome. I just love the idea, the pun of a guild and the fact that guilds represented skilled people traditionally. That's why I called it that. <laughs> yeah, well, the guild's free, Jan. Please join. It's a really nice space. There's a lot of people that have Seamwork and Craftsy or have had it, too, so you can chat with them about it in there. It's not like you're going to get, um, like, newsletters from it, but the first thing I usually recommend if someone signs up is adjust your notifications because you can get too many notifications. And so like, I don't get any because I always log in. There's an app and everything. Um, but I do allow notifications. Like every time someone posts something or comments, like 
I like to be very, I'm very active in there. You can ask questions, get help from people, from me. Oh, I hate how small the seam allowance is right here. All right, let's check my center front right here. This is my last seam, like this is it. Like we're on our very last step of these pants. And this is kind of the one that will set the tone, <laughs> right? All right, so if that's folded down like that, right? Yeah, you have to adjust your notifications. And there's a couple of videos on how to navigate the guild that I made as well. This is so such a problem for me right now. I hope you guys aren't having this problem when you're sewing yours. That is gonna plague me when I do this next step. And I know you love sewing drama, so. This is okay. It, it's lining up pretty good, right? I think that looks okay. All right, let's do it. Yeah, there's messaging in there. I just whacked the, the camera. <laughs> Um, messaging, you can post your makes, ask questions. You're in a weaving guild and it's the same. There are some really amazing weavers along with beginners. See, I love that kind of mix. You think, you, yeah, I feel like you're in there, Jan. My friend just joined. <laughs> I get a notification when people join the guild. I do not, however, and I've been using their help right now, like their live chat help for a while now because I do not get notified if someone joins a paid group. I don't, I don't get a notification for that. It's really a bummer because I would really like to welcome them and ask if you need any help or anything. Cool, Adina. Welcome to the guild. All right, so uh, if you want to pin your waistband, go for it. I'm going to do a few pins. I'm going to do my few pins at these kind of key places like center back. This right here is a kind of a knot of fabric. That would be a really great place to hammer, right? Hammer this. So I'm going to pin my center back and we're on the right side because now we don't have to worry about how the inside looks like, right? We can just stitch it down and we can have the nice stitching on this side. Huh? Wait, you, the Dawn the Dawn have you do that to the back and pre-press. I usually do a guide stitch and then hand baste. Is doing the band to the front in the pattern. I don't actually understand your question, Christina. Is I usually do a guide and stitch and then hand baste. Is doing the band at the front in the pattern. Is doing the band to the front in the pattern. What does that mean? I'm putting the inflection in the wrong place, aren't I? Is doing the band to the front in the pattern? <laughs> the band. What's the band? Sorry, Christina. I'm not sewing the Dawn jeans. I'm sewing the Ash with an H, YouTube. You're, you're crazy. Uh, Closed captions. All right. I'm gonna put these up on my table. Try and get these to be nice and relaxed. Like I'm kind of smoothing out the waistband like this. Sewing the waistband you have, is that in the instructions? Uh, I don't know anymore. I doubt it. I don't usually see people do it this way. The reason I do it this way is because you don't have to worry about have you do the body first, then do inside the second. Oh, they probably do. Yeah, I don't do it that way, Christina. Yeah, I, I like this way better because, <clears throat> because when you do it that way, you have to hope your stitching looks good on the right side. And this way you don't have to hope for that. You're actually gonna guarantee that your stitching looks good. So I fold it just past that first stitch line. 
Did, did, does that answer it, Christina? You can do it their way. You can totally do it their way. Yeah. Yeah, most people do it the other way. I've, I haven't done that in like 20 years. Once I figured out I could do it this way, like I figured this out on collar stands first. And then I just started doing it on everything. Cuffs, waistbands, everything. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, I have a little trick at the center front here, but I, uh, it's not, I'm not gonna be able to show you on this one because there's hardly any seam allowance. So you're not gonna see anything. Oh yeah, Elena, that's awesome. Yeah. Is Ladybird the denim person? I think I used to follow her and I don't see her posts anymore. But if she posts like three times a day, I may have stopped following. That's the only time I stop following people. If they post like three times a day, they crowd out the people that I want to see, which is usually like um, you guys. Oh, right. I've heard, I have heard of that person. I don't think I followed her though. That's awesome. Well, good, I'm glad I'm not the only one that does it this way. This is a lower risk way to do it, in my opinion. That's why I started doing it. I started doing this when I was a beginner because I, I was just tired of worrying that my stitching wouldn't look good on the right side. So I'm just making sure that Oh, okay, okay. There, I feel like there was a denim person. It's just that you're reminding me that it was a denim person I followed and I really loved seeing all of her techniques. But I was getting like five posts a day from her. I have belt loops. I haven't done them yet. I'm too hungry. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Alternations. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 exactly. She's the one who teaches like the big denim courses, right? Like you go, it's like a, like a weekend thing. I feel like I heard about her when Closet Core came out with the ginger jeans or something. All right, so I'm just double checking. I kind of do a couple, then I go back, you know? Can you please stay folded back for me? That's what I'm doing, Michelle. <laughs> uh, yeah, like w if the bell loops are long enough, I would actually either enter, uh, enter them. I would stitch them into the, the waist seam or the, the waist seam or the top of the waistband first, like one end of it, and then I would fold it under. But if they're long enough, oh, I see what you're saying, Michelle. They assemble the um, waistband as one thing and then as, like binding it. Yeah, exactly, on the front or right side. In the <laughs> that, that is funny. <laughs> oh, this edge right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually, that's a, uh, that would be a fun way to do it. I should try that sometime. I, I love that. I've been playing around with sewing a collar stand by finishing it under the collar lately. That's awesome. I'll have to try that sometime. I would love to do that. I, I love finding like different ways. You just never know, like you may, um, it's like everyone loves the burrito method, right? Of doing a, a yolk and I don't do it that way. Um, but it makes sense. But my way, it just works for me, you know? It's not better, it's just different. You just gotta find something that speaks to you. 
And like that collar, like I'm the collar method I'm trying out right now, I haven't done it in like 20 years. I knew it existed, never had done it. Well, I had done it a couple times and then I was just like, ugh, this is a little beyond my skill level right now. Like I don't really, I, my other way is working for me. I'm not gonna, you know, go forward on this. So one of the last times I was sewing a shirt, I was like, hey, let's try that method out. And it actually, it takes away one element that's kind of tricky. I don't need a pin there. And um, it gives you another trickier thing, but I like that trickier thing to deal with better, right? Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show you with is show you is right here at the center front. When you do your folding of your waistband here like this, you see how you have your seam allowance? See, look, this is right here the waist seam, right? So there's these two seam allowances right here of the waist seam, right? When you turn this all around, what you want to do? Let me take out this pin is you want to wrap, why is this f funny here? Oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. You wanna wrap this around. Is that, wait, 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 is this my trick? This is my trick, right? Oh yeah, yeah, okay, so here, take this. This is how it is, I always have to remember. Okay, so here's my waistband, right? This is my pant, this is my waistband, right? And we're gonna look at it like this. We're looking at the short end, the front, right? Wrap this edge around the seam allowance like that, okay? Like that. Just wrap it around that seam allowance. Don't go like this. Don't just fold it under. Because what happens is this little seam allowance will, will hang out sometimes. So yeah. Wrap it around that seam allowance right there and then poke it in. Well, that's awesome. How awesome. Well, that's even better, Elena. I love that. Okay. I'm going to pin this. So uh, one of my other tips is that it's better to take this edge, like when you're coming down um, towards your front, pull this, pick it up, pull it a little bit. See how I created a torque line there? That's gonna be okay because what happens is when you're coming down this edge here, your presser foot's gonna push the fabric. And if you don't kind of over rotate it that way a little bit, what'll happen is it'll push this fabric off the edge I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Because then you'll get this little waistband will push this way, right? Okay. Um, I like to start at the center back, right here. Get my I put my back stitch there. Make sure my label doesn't flip up like it's about to. And this is it. This is your last thing besides your hems. And my my uh, threads wrapped around my needle. Don't do that, please. No drama, no drama. <laughs> as long as your fold edge goes just past that seam that we just sewed, this one right here, right? We just want that fold edge to go just past. You're going to cover it up. You may land on the waistband on the inside. You may not, and it's it's okay. The more you practice this, you're gonna land on the waistband. I kind of over rotated mine. Does she do other jeans or does she all only do gingers or is it that she just does any jeans pattern you bring? So this is what it's looking like on the inside. So look, I have caught my waistband for the most part, but I probably will fall off here and there. It's okay. I'm live streaming right now, so I'm not being a perfectionist about it, but you could if you want. And maybe I'll bring in the camera a little bit. Just a little bit. Here we go. Okay. So I see I have my, these things are poking me. 
This little edge goes just past, that's the seam right there, so it goes just past. Make sure you kind of stretch all this out and get it nice and flat, right? I like to use my awl here to kind of make sure that it doesn't start blumping the fabric toward me. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's right, and she has like all the different sizes. What an incredible thing. Love sewing as we learn more. <laughs> yeah, right? I know, Beverly. And I feel like this pair of jeans, this is like my favorite pair of jeans to wear. It really did get the shaft with that whole thing that happened with the um, stream not ending. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, hand cranking over my brass zipper there. And I like to make sure this is really poked in there. And I'm gonna hold it so that it doesn't blump off the edge. I don't know how else to describe that. Be careful, hammer it. Okay, then we're gonna go up. This little point is really, <laughs> not much of a point, is it? Can I fix it right now? There we go, that looks a little better. We'll make a pretend point with my top stitching. Okay, let's get rid of some of this stuff here so I don't throw it all onto the ground when I rotate my pants. So, um, I'm sorry, you're gonna probably see a lot of white now because it's gonna go under the head of my machine here. I do this all in one stitch. And the reason I like the back stitch at the center back is because if you do your center back right at the center front, I'm sorry, your, your back stitch, I'm getting hungry. So um, I start my seam at the center back because I don't like back stitches right here. And if we do one thing today, even if you do it the other way where you sew your um, outer waistband on first and then your inner waistband on, whatever, whatever, however steps you do, try not to do your back stitch right here at the center front. I say that because if you have to make any adjustments to it, like you have to take anything out, ripping that out right there will start making the fabric um, just, you know, fray. It won't be as crisp. It'll cause you problems. I, I say that just because I've t obviously made tons and tons of mistakes, so I, I know what I hated, fit, you know, fiddling with, and that's why I say that. All right, so now we're getting to the side I haven't sewn yet. I'm just going along the top edge, which is pretty easy. Right? <laughs> All right, so I'm approaching the center front here. turn. I'm gonna make sure this gets poked in here. I'm gonna really try and stitch on the edge there because that's the one where I have very little seam allowance. All right, now we're turning. Now your eyeballs won't be so blinded either. All right. Oh, oh, don't forget your zipper right here. Okay, it's right there. So we're gonna do a few st stitches. And now we're gonna hand crank over our zipper teeth. If you go really slowly, usually your needle will work its way around it. There's been like one or two times where I can tell my needle just hit it squarely in the middle of one of the teeth. And then I just try and get through the seam and then I change out my needle just in case it kind of barbed it. It's a little like puckery right here. I think that's where I was easing on the waistband. Oof, I got really close to the edge right there. So this is a kind of a key thing is that I'm, I've fold, like straighten out everything and I make it nice and flat. I like put it in the position that it's gonna be 
you know, that it wants to be finished. I don't try and like hork, hork it over, you know, or hoik it over. All right, almost done. Hope you did good. I think we started sewing these at what, um, 1220? So I can kind of start my timestamps there. Oh, I got a little bit on my label. I see how I'm always full transparent. Okay, so right here I fell off the waistband on the inside, but see, it doesn't matter because we sewed the seam first, right? That's the stitch we see on the inside, but on the right side, you know, looks good, right? So this is what it looks like. Again, I fell like stitch in the ditch. So if you had pulled this little bit like shallower where you took the fold and maybe butted it up against the stitching, your, all of your stitches are going to land on the waistband on the inside too. But um, I find that that's not as critical as making it look nice on the right side. So all you got to do is a button and buttonhole. You got that right. Let me give you some a few tips on that. Let's see how they look. What's that? Oh, it's just a thread. <laughs> Okay, let's um, look at, let's like uh, zoom this out a tiny bit. I wish that's something I could put on my stream deck is zooming and brightness and stuff, you know? Okay. Now that I have that sewn, I want to see how it lines up. Well, that's not too bad. That actually looks, that looks decent enough. I'm no expert. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can put rivets here or here or both. You can put a... Um, both pockets, only one pocket. The mouse army. Yeah, me too, Elena. Yeah, so my, my, when I do my button, now I, um, oh, do you want to, Beverly? I would love that. I will not say no to that. I don't think I started sewing the jeans to like 1220. So like, um, or maybe it was like 40 minutes in or an hour and 20 minutes in. Cause I did the pocket stitching. That didn't take that long. Did it take that long you guys? I can't remember. But so you don't, like all the rest can just be chatter like zero dot zero zero chatter. And then the time and then the step is fine. <laughs> Stowing begins. <laughs> okay, so um, what was I saying? Oh my gosh, I'm getting too hungry. Oh, the button placement. All right. So um, now classically where you're going to put your button is your buttonhole. Your buttonhole goes horizontal, by the way. It doesn't go vertical. So your buttonhole goes like this, right? This is how your buttonhole goes, right? Now. Um, I like to put my button like just past the zipper, right? So, and sometimes even more, like I like to kind of cinch it in at the top. That is just me. Um, what you could do is try on your pants, put your waistband on and put a pin in it and see like, where am I pinning it? Where does it feel good? And for me, I like my buttonhole to be just past halfway in the height. So if this was the middle of the waistband, I would put my buttonhole right above it, okay? For me, what I don't like is this edge here flaring out like this. 
And so I bias my button and buttonhole a little towards the top. And then I also bias the button. Usually you would line it up with your zipper right here, right? I do it a little further. I cinch the waistband and I think that's just because I know my pants so well and I use the curved waistband and it's a little stretchy. And so that helps. I, and I don't like the flare. So thank you, Beverly. I really appreciate that. Anyone ever, ever wants to do time stands, I am really grateful for that. And it's such a huge gift to the community. So if you're ever watching one of my videos and there's no timestamps and you want to do them, I, uh, thanks. <laughs> All you have to do is write the time and the step. You don't have to do, like Rays are really creative. She'll be like, this is where Sammy realized she shouldn't have done that. So if you want to watch this part, go ahead, but just know in 20 minutes, she's going to fix this. So this is your voice from the future that she's going to fix it. <laughs> I think Beverly does too. She'll be like, she does this right here, but she fixes it <laughs> later because she realized she forgot something. So, all right, these look pretty good. I don't have this wash of jean either. All right, I'm gonna do the hems real quick. Uh, these are the hem length uh, I want because it's my pattern. So, like I, I've already customized it, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but I will, Hmm, maybe I can find a yellow bobbin so I don't have to eyeball it. I'm always eyeballing it and you know how that goes. Neither one of these match though. Wait, no, these don't match. I don't have a yellow bobbin, oh well. No, I love that, Ray, I love that. I, I mean, it's it's the truth, right? <laughs> I'm gonna over, I don't usually overlock my jeans hems. I like to clean finish them. Um, well, actually what I'll do, I'll iron them. That's what I'll do. I'm just like kind of getting hungry, so. <laughs> Your time stamps, are you blog? They're not wordy at all. They're, they're great. They're very honest. They're a, they're a voice from the future, you know? Like sometimes I'll be like, oof, I don't know how to do this. So you might want to look into the, um, you know, fast forward in this live stream right now, if you're rewatching this and see how I do. <laughs> you're right, fancy. <laughs> They're fan stamps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's like the uh, the blog. I've always said like uh, I need a secretary for my live streams because the number of things you guys tell me and turn me on to that's so great. And then um, I forget as soon as the stream's done, I totally forget. I'm like, what was it? Like the other day, Libby said something, and I was like, oh my gosh, can you message me that? She didn't message me. I'm still wondering what it was. I still can't remember. And I keep meaning to go back and look at the stream. It's not her responsibility. <laughs> Fans dance instead of fan fiction. I mean, you could start writing fan fiction in the in so so live uh, fan timestamps. <laughs> okay. I'm very badly ironing this right now, aren't I? I'm gonna iron it and then um, I'll be able to top stitch it from the right side so that the orange thread or yellow thread is visible. And normally I wouldn't even iron the hem. <laughs> this is why I'm so bad at it. But because I can't sew from the inside, I mean I could, but I don't feel confident. Bye, Raquel. Have a good lunch or dinner, whatever you're doing. <laughs> yep, I'm just going to hem. I'm all done. You guys can leave me. It's fine. <laughs> we did the whole jeans. Ooh, that kind of makes me think of a burrito. Maybe I'll go get a burrito. That is one thing that's open today. 
in paradise. There's not a lot up here. You gotta like take what you can get. Oh, that's awesome, Jan. I'm so glad. That was such a fun, I love the little like, you know, like side things like that. Like Jan does hair and makeup and she needed like a recommendation for pins for wigs. I don't know anything about wigs. But um, I have learned a little bit about pins lately because I just can't find the pins I used to use and like. And so I've been looking on the hunt. And so um, lately I've been really liking the kind of chunkier ones, the heavier millimeter. Oh, Terry. <laughs> I'm doing more of these. I know, right? It's because I'm going to stitch from the right side. I know I'm doing more than I ever do. <laughs> okay yeah terry i need that i need to remember that when we get there Ooh, i bought a piece of the pumpkin bread from starbucks yesterday i like their pumpkin cream cheese muffin and i had molly remember i had molly during the live stream last night and so um i had her so i wanted to treat her to a pup cup that's something Cricket always did, and I never do. So uh, I took her there, and, and, and then he was like, do you want anything else? And I was like, ooh, do you have those? And he said, no, <laughs> but we have the bread. And I was like, I like the bread. I want the other. Pinning down the face to the wig block, yeah. That's funny, Elena. Okay. So um, what Terry is talking about is that you you clip this right here, right, Terry? You clip the seam allowance. I want one of those. That's what I just need to do is make my own. Okay, I do I clip it right here at the fold so that the seam allowance goes the other way in here? That's what I do, right? I clip it here. I'm gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> like, answer me, Terry. <laughs> All right, so this seam lots, I'm gonna move that way. This is up here. Like that. Mm hmm. Okay, and now I'm gonna, um, I'm actually gonna turn this inside out. I do cl two clips, That's it does feel like I could do two clips. Let's check it out. I mean, this does reduce the bulk because it's like one whole thing. I think I'll just do one for now. All right, so I'm gonna stitch this from the right side because I have the yellow thread on. That's why I ironed. Okay, and I got my offset seam allowance on the out seam. That does feel a lot better. I mean, look at that. It just went right over it. That's such a good, good trick. Good tip, Terry. Thank you. Look at that wobbly start there. That's why we start on the inseam. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is nice and evenly distributed. Yeah, that's so true, Jan. I have a video to record. I have that Let's Be Honest video to record. And I'm totally scared about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I might regret it, but I'm gonna do it. And um, otherwise I might do my, my button and buttonhole for this, you know.
right? Yeah, exactly, Jan. Exactly. Okay. Go. It, it is. It's just like butter going over that transition there. Pushed my little fold edge there. Cool. Yay, I'm so glad these are finally done. So glad they're finally done. They've been sitting in my bin for a year. And at least now I can say, yes, I, I do. Because people ask me, do you have a, a Ash Jeans? And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry that first video got corrupted. You can watch my, my prototype where I sewed for fitting. But that's all I had to offer. You look good. <laughs> I should have put a little pitchfork here. Have you seen that guy who, who animates? Um, like, he'll add a layer of animation. Like, um like a cat running through the yard and he has like a little like a uh, suit of armor on and holding a sword but it's a cartoon and it just looks like he's the he's like <laughs> they're really funny that's what I should have done I should have put like a little sword and a pitchfork <laughs> we didn't have the <laughs> we didn't really have the patience for that though did we okay and then the belt loops belt loops I'll do the belt loops really quick I'll do the belt loops really quick. But I do usually put them in a seam. I'm gonna overlock one edge. And then um, we're just gonna fold this like this in three with the overlocked edge up. And I'm just gonna sew two rows of stitching down the center to catch it. Could probably iron this, it'll go a little faster. It'll be turn out be nicer. It's the weekend. My th thing this weekend is I, I really wanna work in the yard. That's what I love doing. But the yard hates me right now. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because I don't want any more poison oak. Yeah, no. My hands are now, today, feeling a little better, even though they don't really look much better. Okay, I do, I'm gonna do one more row. My belt loop game is not very strong, obviously. All right, and then uh, you need five usually do as many as you want as long as you have the right length right and so I think let's see this is 12 25 and a half uh, so two and a half times five that'll work right so if I do three inches times five that's 15 inches so I have plenty of room for that which I love with that because when I don't sew my my um oh my god my, it does it does look really terrible my stitching on this because i'm in a hurry but um i will sometimes pick the straighter sections like so you see how this goes out right there i would start like right here and then measure to there you know but it it is something that's not very visible three inches is that what i want oh this looks really yeah three inches is going to be good for me oof they look really bad though 
I feel like I maybe need to <laughs> redo this. One, two, three. Four, five. I can get six out of here, so maybe I'll add another one. I'm not sure where I'll put it though. Well, maybe I'll just leave that one out. All right. So normally when I do belt loops, when I want them, I will either stick them in this seam when I sew it together. And if it's a long enough belt loop, which is what I prefer, I will stick it in there, right? When I sew this together. And then when I, un, when I stitch this, I will try and catch it in the seam. But the problem with this is you cannot do a continuous seam. You'll have to stop because you can't sew through your belt loop, right? So that's why you don't see it very often. This could be a longer belt loop. I could be wrong with the amount that you're supposed to cut these. So when I edge stitch it, I usually center this so that those double needles line up with my double needle of my center back seam rather than straddling the seam itself. Cause look, this is the center actually. But if I put it right here, it'll look a little off kilter. See? So I just put it here like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, Terry? Exactly. They are no friend of yours. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll put two at the center back. I'll put them off center this time. I've never done that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, um... oh, this is my other little tip. I told everybody to go, like, you could leave now and I wasn't gonna do it anymore, but here's my last tip. See this, like, especially on stretched de denim, you see this right here, these little white threads? Pull those out. Just get rid of them. They will plague you. Get rid of all of it. And, and it's because that's the little um, lycra, especially on the stretch denim. It's the little piece of lycra and that just keeps going and it will show after you've um, washed your pants a few times, you'll see it kind of poking out of your belt loop and it just is annoying. So just pull it out now. It's gonna come out anyway, right? Look at that, how easy it's coming out. So just get rid of it. Just do it, do it a favor. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna trim these threads right here. <laughs> Maybe not put, gouged. Gouged was a little strong. That's where we draw the line here. I'm gonna line it up with my stitching on my waistband. You can bar tack these too. And then down here as well. Usually you wanna go way below the waistband because your belt is usually wider and it allows for different widths of belts. And that's why I say you need a really long belt loop to be able to fold up all the way up to the seam allowance in the waistband. You can even put these like right sides together and fold it up. I never do that. But you can. Oops, that was a little crooked. <laughs> All right, so visually, where do I think this one should be? Like right there, I think. Like that. All right, one more down here. Try and get it the same length as the other. Oof, it did a bit sloppy. All right, and then the uh, um, other others are usually like, it's about like one inch in front of the pocket depending on how much space you have here, maybe on a smaller size, you would wanna line it up with the pocket stitching right here, like this. Um, I usually put mine like right there and one, one inch behind the side seam right here. Oh! It's so funny because I, I'm not about like drama in some ways, but I don't mind like 
kind of watching it a little bit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Especially so I know what to avoid. What'd you think, Libby? It wasn't that spicy. You know me. All the spice for the year is going to be in my next Let's Be Honest. <laughs> That's when I'm getting canceled. <laughs> Okay. Your pattern probably has, you know, the guides to where these go. <laughs> oh, I thought I caught the pocket in there. stitching. You missed stuff to ask a silly question. So I had a couple of spicy things I wanted to talk about. Get your guys' opinions. I like hearing everybody's opinions because sometimes what I think of as being like a problem isn't a problem. It's not a pattern, it's a book. It's gonna be my very first book review, Martina. And I'm really regretting <laughs> doing it because the author seems like such a, like a sweet person. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, we'll see. I, I, there's things about the book I like, you know. Oh yeah, and I read a newsletter post from Ready to Sew. That's one of the things. And then the other thing is uh, the, the new Instagram account, the Honest Pattern Reviews thing. Which obviously caught my eye since my series is called, you know, it's Honest Pattern Reviews, right? So I was like, ooh. So I wanted to know what people thought of it because I definitely have some issues with it. I love the idea of it, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, right, Glibby? I agree. You know, it's funny because I was, um, I sometimes now forget to check Instagram. There's a lot of people there I really, really like, you know, and um, I really like seeing what they're up to, and they're not in the guild. They don't even know I exist probably, you know. But um, I forget to check, you know, because I, I, I really like the guild too. Like, I'm just so relieved that that worked because, in fact, I actually, just so you all know, oh, and you're talking, so did a week and we're talking about that. What about Jan? Oh, that Honest Pattern Reviews thing. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um. One thing I wanted to share with you guys is that Mighty Networks reached out to me. It was definitely not like a very special email, but it, it definitely, because I've been thinking like, I think our guild gets a lot about, gets a lot of uh, activity compared to other communities. But I, I don't know. I'm not any other, in any other communities. I don't think that would be kind of appropriate for me to do that, you know, um, unless it's not sewing related and so um I can't quite tell like if you go to Mighty Network's site and you like look for other communities to join because there's communities on all kinds of things you know like making beer or playing piano or you know being an accountant there's communities on everything right and so um you can tell how active the community is before you join it. It'll say last active or how many active members, right? Julian, hello, how's it going? Hey, um, Julian, are you, you're Julian from Instagram, right? That we've had this discussion, right? I just wanna make sure that I congratulate you for being in the new Mimi G pattern line. That is so awesome. 
I have a pattern review show and we were just talking about it last night. So huge congratulations. It's really cool. <laughs> I'm just finishing my stream right now. I just finished the Ash Jeans and I'm a starving Marvin right now. They turned out great. That is so cool. I am so happy for you. That is legit cool. Love your pattern. That, I just love it. We got to look at all the patterns last night. That is really awesome. <laughs> You're like a rock star. Rock star in my stream chat. <laughs> Um, this has been such a busy stream day. We had 74 people is what I saw at one point. That's awesome. That's the most people I've had in the stream, I think. Starving Marvin. I am a little hungry right now. <laughs> yeah, other Mighty Networks can be such a ghost town. And that's such a bummer because I think it's like, it takes involvement. You know, you got to put in what you want to get out, you know? And so, um, I, um feel for someone starting a community and not getting a lot of traction, but ours is doing so good, you know, and I'm really, really happy with that. I feel like everybody's pretty active. I don't know how many members we have right now. It's probably like 600, but there's like a hundred active people a week, which is really high. And that's great. And, and I was telling you that Mighty Networks reached out to me and said, your guilt, your community is in like the top percentages of active members, so awesome. Good job, guys. That's really cool. So cool. I was like, yeah, because we don't like drama. <laughs> anyway, yay, I finally got my ash jeans done out of that bin. Thank you for anything goes week, you guys. Um, and um, have a great weekend. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Beverly, for doing timestamps today. And if you are new and you want to subscribe, please do. I am live stream every couple weeks now that we have this guild. You're welcome to join the guild. All, everyone's welcome there. It's really, really amazing place. Like everybody, every size, every person, every skill level, absolutely welcome. And, um, and there's just like really great people to connect with. Everyone's doing different things in there, so... And it's not overwhelming, thankfully. I don't think I could handle it if it was. Yeah, exactly, Aisha, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and then I just launched channel memberships this week. So if you want to get emotes, so this is them right here. I only have three. I'll just do a few more this weekend now that I actually got your guys' feedback on a few more. Or there's the Michelles. <laughs> yeah, of course, Aisha. I know you said you were going to start making them soon. Um, that's it for me. I'm making the Mitchell trousers this month by Closet Core Patterns. Probably not two weeks from now, but four weeks from now. So I make sure I have the proper fabric and everything. Stay tuned. The, the calendar will be up next week. I post it on Instagram and on my community tab here on uh, YouTube just in case you don't have Instagram. And I posted in the guild as well. And if you want to check out the guild, sosoguild.com. And yeah, I have a website too. If you're ever looking if I've sewn something or wondering if I've sewn it, uh, you can go to my website. It's not a ploy to get you to my website. I really don't sell much there. It's just a place where I keep track of all my projects and there's a search bar and just pop in the search bar what you're looking for to see if I've made it. Then you can find all the links to all the videos are right there. It's a really short project description. So you can also say or find out like what fabric I used, what size I made right there, what, how I personally felt about it, good and bad. I'm really honest. Um, and <clears throat> there's the links to the videos so that you don't lose like, like there's usually a cutting video, sewing part one, part two, and sometimes you can't find <laughs> sewing part one, but you can find sewing part two because YouTube's navigation is kind of not great. So <gasps> one plus years of school love to Dina. And then she's our lawyer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Shasha. Yeah, you can save. I don't know if you guys know about that, but you can save videos like for any YouTuber. 
save their video to a playlist, I recommend making sure your playlist is private just in case you don't want them to know that you're really into collecting old tires. <laughs> I don't know. You get my drift, All right? All right, I'm gonna go eat. Thanks for coming. Thanks for stopping by everybody. It was really great to see you all. Have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.